Hey, Luke Thompson from Action VFX here. I wanted you to know that our Black Friday sale starts on November 22nd at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and only goes until November 25th. So you only have three days this year to take advantage of these awesome savings. During this time, you'll be able to get 55% off all of our VFX assets. This even includes our new stuff, like our new explosions and our space category that has planets and meteors and even our new variety packs. In total, we've launched over 40 collections just this year. So check out all the new stuff. I guarantee you're gonna see something you haven't seen before. And if a subscription's what you're after, you can get double credits if you purchase any of our annual plans during this window. So if your annual plan includes 30 credits every month, you get 60, which is twice by my count. Plus, with our free for subscribers perk, anyone on a basic or pro plan instantly gets access to a thousand of our free for subscribers assets, which is a curated list normally paid for absolutely free, and it doesn't count towards your credit amount. That is a lot of assets. Look at all those elements. Look at all those chickens. Wow. And if you're a studio looking to give your team access to the entire Action VFX library with team features and unlimited downloads, contact us. For a limited time during Black Friday, we have a very special deal for you that includes a lot of other benefits and perks. Join alongside the top VFX studios in the world and gain access to the Action VFX library today. Okay, hello everyone, hello, hello, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome to another stream from Hugo's Desk. Thank you so much for being here. I can see a lot of people, a lot of familiar faces on the chat. Thank you so much for being here. And yeah, today we are going to have a special stream. I know we just uh, saw each other, <laughs> like we did a stream last week. But um, I'm trying to now start to do more streams, as I said before, as I said last, last week. Last week I did mention that I was going to start doing the show reviews twice a month, which is true. It's going to happen. And then these ones will be um, once a month. So eventually we'll have three streams a month. That will be the idea. But yeah, but uh, today, is, as you probably saw, just the word from our sponsor. We are today we're sponsored by Action VFX. So thank you so much for them for sponsoring this stream and for supporting you guys that's like this. Don't, of course, as you saw how Luke was explaining everything, uh, today is the last day of the Black Friday sale from Action VFX. So be sure to go and check them out and check out what they're doing over there. There's a lot of really good deals happening at Action VFX. It's by far my favorite uh, stock uh, website to buy stock for my composites. So, uh, so yeah. But yeah, thank you so much for all the kind words. I see a lot of really kind words here on the chat. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so we're going to start by talking about the giveaways. Today we have uh, two really special giveaways, actually, because um, it's Black Friday. It's to celebrate that. Uh, the first giveaway is going to be for my new course, as, as usual. I'm going to be giving away two, two seats of my new course, which is endorsed by the Foundry, uh, to two lucky viewers of the stream. Uh, if you want to get involved on, uh, I think that my sound is very low, so I'm just putting a bit more. Uh, if you want to get involved on the giveaway, I've posted a link on the chat. So just go to that link and just sign up for the giveaway. Of course, goes without saying, if you're already a student, a student of my course, maybe don't, maybe skip this giveaway, maybe do the other giveaway that we have. So that's for my Nuke course. Um, then we also have another giveaway. And this giveaway is for, uh, I'm going to put it on the chat as well. This is a giveaway from uh, Shenson Labs Pen Tablet Medium. Uh, so um, thank you so much to Shenson Labs for giving away a tablet for the audience. So we have one to give away to the audience today. And um, so, yeah, someone is on the chat asking where they can buy the course. Yeah, the course, the course is... Um, is discounted today the cost is on black it's black friday today for the course as well so you can buy the course 50 percent off but i'll talk about that in a second uh, i'm gonna just like uh, do a little bit of a few shout outs just before we start the workshop as we usually do um so i'm just gonna like uh, put the screen here just uh, give me a second 
Um, yeah, so as always, if you want to check out my work, just go to hugoafengerre.com. You can check some of my work as a director and as a visual effects supervisor. The last thing I did was the Sniper Elite 5 cinematic trailer that I directed. And it goes without saying that just feel free to like subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really would help my channel a lot. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. And the place of my channel, as you know, we do these live streams and we also... Uh, have a lot of tutorials and we have the podcast that I do with Ian Files every week and this is the before and afters uh, uh, Ian Files from before and after so we do the VFX Notes podcast we just uh, two days ago released the episode about Avatar the first Avatar which is a really cool episode because we were together on the same room and we also have like Nope and we have Uncharted and we have RRR which are, is my favorite film of the year for the Oscars so um, so yeah check out my channel um I also have a second channel, Hugo's Desk, uh, uh, Hugo's Second Desk, <laughs> where I put my VODs from my Twitter times. Um, you can go also to Hugo Siguero on Twitter if you want to follow up what I'm up to there. <laughs> as you can see, I'm on Black Friday mode. And as I said, um, at the moment, my course is 50% off. But maybe don't buy it yet. If you are interested in buying my course, maybe don't buy it yet because I'm going to give away two of them for the audience. So maybe wait a little bit. And, and the 50% the off is the cheapest this course has ever been. It's going to be until Sunday night. And so that means the course costs 125 pounds, which is the cheapest price it ever had. It will be available until midnight on, um, midnight on, um, on Sunday as well. And yeah, if you want to chat with me or get some contacts or, you know, like just, um, you know, talk to me on LinkedIn, you can do that as well. I usually accept all, all the links. Um, I'm reaching 20,000 followers there on LinkedIn. So maybe connect to me on LinkedIn. It's always a great place for you to get some work and to get some networking going. Um, so yeah. And then, um, yeah, if you want to support my channel, you have a Patreon as well. Uh, which you can find on the links on on my on my videos um, and yeah let's chat out as I said to Action VFX they were the sponsors of this uh, stream also Foundry is also a, a long time sponsor of the streams but uh, Foundry together with Action VFX but Action VFX today still seven hours to go with their uh, with their 50 55 percent off <laughs> and as I said we have a tablet as well to give away today um, they are also with uh, Chancel Labs are also off with 30% off at the moment, um, so maybe check them out. Um, they're not sponsor of this stream, but but I they were very kind to give us um, very kind to give us like a tablet for us to kind of like give it away. Uh, so I, I've I've already posted the links. We have one link which is for the two uh, new courses that I'm going to give away today. Um, that's why I was saying don't buy it yet. And then one uh, tablet as well uh, to give away. So I can see some people already signing up, I guess. Uh, let's see here. We already have 58 people signing up for the tablet. We already have 82 people to the course. <laughs> okay. A lot of more people want the course than they want the tablet. That's good. So yeah, I'll, po I'll post the links again, and then we'll start um, a bit of workshop, really. Today is workshop day, not show real day. Uh, here's the two links. Oh, wait, oh, yeah, the links still work. Yeah, those are the two links for the two giveaways that uh, we're doing. I think maybe I should... Post them one by one. Sorry about that. Um, I think the links go a little bit off here. Um, uh, yeah, that's working. And then this one is also working. Uh, yeah, so, um, and as I mentioned on the intro, someone is asking here, how do they buy the course? I mean, every information of the course can be found here. So nuke course info is found on this video. So on this video's description, you have the links, you have the PayPal link, you have the links with the testimonials, you have everything there. But about my, enough about me, I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> so um, let's just jump into Nuke. So this is actually, today I wanted to do some, I wanted to basically continue the workshop we did. I know this workshop has been dragging for a while now. Uh, we've done now, this is the ninth session we are doing of this workshop. Hopefully I finish it today. Um, I've been a bit behind on finishing the editing of it. I know you can still re-watch the entire workshop by watching the live streams because my live streams are always available as VODs on uh, Hugo's Desk. And you can even watch this one as a VOD, um, you know, as a, as a video on demand. 
uh, and it's free as well. So you can always rewatch them. But I am, I promised that I was going to edit them and I will, I will edit them uh, so that you can see them uh, fully edited without the chat and without the giveaways and without everything else. Um, but yeah, um, as usual, I'm going to jump into Nuke. Um, as usual, don't forget that during the workshop session, you know, like that we usually do, I don't really take questions from the audience, okay? So keep that in mind that I am going to neglect the audience for a while. Uh, usually, as I mentioned before, usually it's 20 minutes in one go, and then we do the break, and then we do another 20 minutes. So uh, be sure to understand that I'm going to neglect the audience. I'm, I'm, I'm then going to go and talk to you uh, after the break. So, so if you have questions... Uh, regardless if it's a question about anything in general or if it's a question about what I'm doing on the screen on this workshop, just keep in mind that you probably can post. Just stick the question for a moment here and uh, keep the question uh, for later. You know, once we do the break, I can answer some questions. We can do a few questions, then have the giveaway as well. But yeah, so I'm going to like um, start with the workshop and we're basically going to continue where we left off. So I'm going to just do a marker so that we know that this is the workshop. So, uh, oh, this is a nice flare. Oh, I see that. We got a, got a nice flare here going <laughs> on the on the lights here. This is nice. I like this. I like flares. It's nice. Uh, so yeah. So the workshop is going to start now for about 25 minutes, and then if you're not if you're only only interested on the giveaway. Uh, or just interested on the questions, you know, maybe come back in 25 minutes or so, and then I'll I can answer your questions. So let's just go back into this thing here. Uh, sorry, always always click the wrong thing. Um, okay, cool. So I'm sure you're already fed up with this shot, and um, I I I apologize that we've been doing this shot for so long now, but uh, I think we're gonna wrap it up today one way or the other that's my plan um and also like show you like the actual final comp of what we did at the time so i don't know if you remember the last time we were talking about this we we actually had we were comping the entire cg of this shot this is the final version of the shot uh which i showed you before um i'll show you on full screen in a minute um and basically um we we haven't really reached any of this yet uh we're just basically just going through I've been like spending a long time explaining things. I think last time, uh, oh, wait a minute. Is it going to crash? <laughs> I think we're going to start with a crash. Uh, uh oh, Nuke seems to be it's going to crash. Hmm. Let me see here. Yeah, I have the wheel of death for a second here. Give me a second. Uh, I'm going to put my little truck while I'm waiting for the wheel of death to, to die off. Um, you already know how this goes. The um, you know my streams are usually a garbage truck on fire, so yeah, new crash. That's great. Sorry guys. Um, I'm so sorry about that. I guess um, didn't like Nuke didn't like what I was trying to do. Yeah, not responding. So I need to open it up again. To apologize for that. I had it open and all ready for us to start, and then of course it had to crash exactly on the moment that we started. Um, why not, right? So let me just open it again. <sighs> it's just like, really? Why does it crash like this? Sorry about that. In no way this is a reflection of how Nuke operates. Usually it crashes. That's normal. You know, whenever something crashes, hey, you just open it again, right? That's how it works. Um, so let me just open it again. Uh, yeah, that's the script. Just a second. Yeah, there you go. And now we have the script again. Back on business. Okay, cool. Excellent. Okay. Not sure why it crashed. I have no idea. But as I was saying, um, you were. this was the last thing I was doing. I'm going to try to wrap it up today. So just to do a really quick, quick recap, because it's been a month or more, I think a month and a half since we last looked at this script. Um, and... Don't forget that I will, I promise that it will be an edited version on YouTube. I already published a few edited versions of this workshop, but I will publish the rest as well as soon as I have a bit more time. Uh, yeah, it crashes just like everyone else, for sure. <laughs> That's true, Studio. It does crash for everyone else. So to do a bit of a recap, um, I did this entire thing splitting it up into parts remember we had the individual passes individual renders of all the passes and i kind of like comp them into a stream so that we can have access to them including the object ids which i know these are a bit old but this is because this is um, 
before the time where we had crypto mats. So this is how we brought it in, and then we kind of rebuilt the shader. Haven't really color corrected anything on this shader. This is just like almost straight out of CG. Haven't really done much. I, th I think that's kind of what I want to do today. Um, so, um, okay, so uh, someone is asking on the chat that they bought the course and they don't have it yet. Yeah, R remember that as it says on the PayPal link, uh, it usually takes one or two days to process the whole thing, to get the payment, and then to send the login. So anyone buying the course, remember to wait a day or two until you get everything. Uh, so I know a lot of people sometimes buy it and want the course like five minutes later. But that's not really possible because I need to wait for PayPal to process the payment and then I need to like accept everything and then I can send everything. So don't worry, it will come through once I have everything. Yeah, so we then had a 3D system. The 3D system, remember, we were running it with the camera and the geometry so we can put a matte painting. Uh, we also had the depth of field with ZD Focus, and the depth of field was connected, so it was cloned, and so that we could kind of like have them on both sides, both on the background and also on the foreground as well. And after that, uh, just waiting for it to pop up, just a second. Yeah, there we go. And um, after that, we also um, uh, comped the whole character, really the character which was separated. Uh, we talked about this before where we separate because we want to have more control, you know, like, you know, stuff like having light wrapping or using edge blurring for the edges or even like controlling the depth of field really like we're doing here so we can control the edges and we can control like the the quality of that depth of field we didn't really do any color correction to the whole thing uh, the only thing we did talk about was this extra pass of scratches that i did extra we'll put it in in in, in a minute uh, we then had like some depth of field remember we did the color edge to extend the edges so that we could kind of like um take care of the edge problems that we were having, went through that on the last, I think that was two times ago, not um, not not the last stream, but the stream before that. Um, and then after that, we started putting in the particles, we put in the particles, all the particles in. Um, I believe uh, this one wasn't put in, I think I only put these ones in. Um, and then we were kind of finished here. In the last time we talked about, we actually brought in some lens grids. Um, so we, we haven't really put in like the actual lens distortion. Like we brought in the lens distortion. I, I talked a bit about it, how I actually film the, the real lenses. Yeah, so for those of you that were here, you can just watch it again. You know, that's kind of a, a quick recap. So there's a few things that I wanted to talk about today. Um, and because obviously I also have like the final script here. So this this is the final script, which I also want to go through um, in detail, just putting it in full screen so that I can kind of like um, uh, put it here so that you can see it uh, just a second. Yeah, so this is the actual production script, which is very similar to the one we did, although this one has more stuff at the end here, uh, like chromatic aberration and lens distortion and all sorts of things. Um, that was the final script. So today I wanted to kind of talk about, because uh, last time it was lenses and vignetting, today I want to talk a bit about how my approach usually is to tweak things with the object IDs. In this case, could be either object IDs or you could use a cryptomat. You don't need to use object IDs. You could use a cryptomat. Cryptomats are available from everyone. And then also I wanted to talk a little bit about specular glows using some of the passes to do some glows and then you put in some grain. The grain is really simple because this is CG, you know, so there's not like footage to to comp in. And then I wanted to like put like some quick um, some quick chromatic aberration and do a little bit of grading and then kind of go through the script. That was my plan at least. Um, so let's go back to the to the workshop file and not the final file. So first things first, like talk really briefly about the fact that there was a reason why I went through the trouble of putting all these AOVs. Remember we talked about that sometimes you get the renders, all of them in one single EXR. In this case, that was not the case. That was individual EXRs for each pass. This was mainly done because it was simpler to have this on a network and also it was simpler to upload it to Dropbox because then it, you have less bandwidth needed to upload everything to Dropbox. So 
But in the middle of all this, we have the object IDs, and which are, they're very simple on this project. We have the object ID for the armor, the eyes, the sword, and then we have object IDs for the horns, for the inside of the armor, and then also for the wings. And these are basically processes of us trying to color correct or balance things. And most of the times when you're doing this kind of CG, you're nothing more than just the, uh, adapting to what the client asked for, because a lot of times the client might not, you know, want, know what they want necessarily, or they might not, they might want to change something that it's going to take too long to go back into 3D to re-render. Obviously, these days, you know, you can re-render things really quickly, but it's still, still relatively quicker to do it in comp. So. I'm just gonna like give you a few pointers of what I tend to do when I'm doing a shot like this. So this is a very stylized shot, of course. So it's not supposed to be photo real anyway. We'll have time to do more workshops in the future, which will be more photo real. In in fact, I'm planning to my work next workshop. I'm planning to do this shot that I was doing for a short film, where we had a body falling on a real car, and then the car was breaking, and then we would uh, comp that CG in. That was kind of my plan to, to go next. So this is highly stylized, but we talked a bit about on the, a couple of months ago about the denoising. I've disabled it here because it was super noisy, the, the GI. It was really, really noisy. Um, so, but things that I tend to do when I'm doing this, this kind of stuff. Now, if I want to really change something dramatic in terms of color correction, in terms, in terms of the the actual color of the materials, then the diffuse place, the diffuse texture is the place where I would go. And in fact, that's where I would put the scratches that we talked about. You know, this is that pass that I rendered. Remember, this pass was actually created by this little thing. And um, I have like the setup here on the side. Um, so this, this pass of scratches, it's very, very rudimentary and it's actually easier to do it in CG. But at the time, we actually did it in three in Nuke because it was kind of like faster for us to just do a pass like this because it was like an afterthought of what we were making at the time. So this was done using the actual geometry of the character and then using UV tile setup, uh, using some scratch textures and uh, basically like using scratch textures and also like um, abrasing textures as well we kind of like output this pass with motion blur and um, that you saw there which is kind of kind of looks like this i know it looks a bit bit crap but it the point of it is just to give it like a little tweak you know so i call it corrected it a little bit and then i the place where you would put something like this and this is the same location where you would put if you had like lights that would be rendered in the cg area of nuke would be with the diffuse because it makes more sense to have it on the diffuse. The diffuse is actually the place where we don't have lights yet, we don't have shadows yet, we don't have reflections yet. So, so, so if anything, that's where it should be multiplied and then comped. So, so it's almost like we have the diffuse here, and then I would, um, you know, multi. Oh, sorry, wait, wait a minute, I'm putting it in the wrong place. So I'm, I'm actually comping it here. Yes, yeah, so, so that's right. Because the thing with this is that let me just like reverse this. So just a second. So I'm going to put it here like that. I have too many connections here. Um, yeah, so that would be like that and then like this. And I think, I believe this, this is not toned down all the way. Um, and it shouldn't be a multiply. What am I doing? So, uh, sorry, guys. So just a second. Um, so, yeah, so this would be, you know, just just a little subtle thing of scratches that I would put on top. And this would be placed on top of the actual diffuse because the diffuse is the one that doesn't have any light. It doesn't have any shadows. It doesn't have any reflections. It's kind of like the most clean version of, of the whole thing. Once that's done, um, once that's done, I remember we, we are using the raw, the actual raw lighting. So we have the raw GI and then we have the raw diffuse. Of course, that gets multiplied together to get the GI. Um, and obviously the scratches don't really affect much on there. And then we also have the direct light, which is all the directional light. I didn't separate the lights on this project because it was going to be too, too much, you know, like we had too many shots. We had like almost 100 shots on this trailer, so we couldn't really like spend the entire thing, you know. Um, so so <laughs> I love that Sergio is saying, I'm here just for the prize. 
Congratulations, Sergio. You're in the well, <laughs> in the right place. <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm bother bother uh, uh, bothering you with compositing. <laughs> Um, okay, so then that gets merged together, and then that gets merged together with the rest. Now, obviously, you hardly see it, but you can kind of see the scratches are there. I think they're kind of like too much, probably. Um, I might want to tone them down just a little bit. Once that's done, um, then, you know, normally things that I usually tend to do is I, I tend to like to tweak reflections just because I... I I like reflective stuff, and and when 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 you're doing something really really stylized, usually um, uh, bringing in the reflections a little bit more kind of helps um, um, bring the shot to look cooler. Um, and I'll I'll show you what I mean. So for example, in here, uh, it tends to be that I, I I tend to go in here and start putting some color correction um, into the reflections. And I know that this is like a, a heresy almost, you know, because I'm tweaking the materials that the CG CG artist tweaked so long, but this is usually a conversation I do with my artists, you know, like I, I explain to them, you know, I'm going to push the reflections here, and as soon as it breaks, if it does break, indeed, uh, as soon as it breaks, I would ask the CG artist to redo the reflections or something, but but I, I tend to tend to kind of push my reflections a little bit tighter so that I have a bit more reflectivity into it, um, so... I tend to go to my midtones, which are like the 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 middle range of the scene, and tend to kind of like color correct and get more highlights on those midtones. So you see there that you have these lovely reflections, and I I kind of like like to pump the reflections a little bit more. I tend to kind of pump the gamma a little bit more, just so that I can have a little bit more of reflectivity. And this will be done in two places. So we'll have. The main one here will pump these highlights a little bit. Um, and then the other one will be on the speckler. So uh, on the speckler pass, you see these ones, if you look at this, the cool thing about this is that these speculars would pick up some light, you know, depending on the shot. Of course, you don't want to go too far with this, but depending on the shot, they would ping, they would ping lights, you know. And to, for you to ping lights... There's quite a few th few ways of doing this. I I, I tend to like to use glows, individual glows, to try to to add more glints and and glares into the to the glows. Now, be careful about one thing though. In here on the specular, yes, that's true. I could go in here and put a color corrector, and maybe I could bring those highlights to be pinged more. So let's say we. We go really crazy, and I might tweak this back, but I could go in midtones and I put two, you know, so I'm 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 really like toning up the the highlights so that these these pings get much more brighter than they are at the moment. Cause I I tend to I tend to like to overexpose things because it just makes it a little bit more realistic in that way. But you need to be careful with the glows though, because if you if you decide to put a glow here, I'm gonna show you. So imagine that you want to have some nice glow and I'm going to just put effect only so I can show you. And then I, I would put some of the tolerance and for just to explain, just for the explanation purpose of this, I'm going to show you something. Imagine that you glow a lot and imagine that you are looking for something that would glow this much. I know this looks like a terrible comp, but I, I'm just like making a point. The issue you do have here uh, that you need to remember is that this is actually not the place that you should do the glows. I would much, uh, I would much more advise you to do them after the pre-mold because at the moment this comp, because I'm just doing color correction, is not pre-multiplied. You see the edges; they're not pre-multiplied, so the glow is not pre-multiplied either. So the problem is that after it gets pre-multiplied after the color correction, then you'll get the glow to be cut. You see. So that's one main problem here. So you see, if I if I disable and enable the glow, you see the glow is not actually coming through and feeding into the plate, which should be. So this is not the correct place to put glows. I, I what I tend to do is I when I'm and and again, please. I, I've had I I've been I, I've had some problems in the past where people would leave comments on my YouTube channel and and say, oh, but this is not the right way to do it, or this I don't like this way. Keep in mind that this is my way of doing things, you know, like obviously there is a lot of other people and a lot of other artists that have done it in different ways. So what I'm teaching and what I'm showing here is not really like the 
all in the only way of doing it. There are so many other ways of doing Nuke. And actually, funny enough, recently I was teaching an artist. I was teaching an, a quite senior artist, and, and he was transitioning from Flame to Nuke. And I was doing a workshop with him. I was teaching him the differences between Flame and Nuke, and I was kind of going through the thing with him. And he was so, he was so confused because he was like oh, but I've opened some scripts from people and someone did it this way and then I opened another script and someone did it that way and then another, another script and then someone did it that way. So there's a lot of ways of doing the same thing in Nuke. There's actually like five, six, seven types of ways of doing things. The way I'm showing you here is not the only way. It is one way. So just please keep that in mind. Don't, don't kind of like, um, you know, don't kind of like think that this is the only true method of doing CG compositing. Not at all. Uh, this is the method that I've been using for years and the way that I've worked at the mill and at the Rebellion, at place that this is kind of where, how I usually comp. Uh, and my team tends to comp like this as well because they work with me and we share scripts around. So, and as you can see, I'm very organized. So it's like, you know, like, like a little bit like that. So, so keep in mind that this entire thing that you're seeing here, which is the rebuild of the shader, um, the beauty rebuild, as we usually say, and I know some of you already know all this crap, but remember, this is a nuke for beginners course. So it's like I'm teaching people from scratch. So at least that's my intent. So in here, I tend to just do color correction. So if you want to do glows, remember to do it after the pre-mold. So I'm, I'm going to do it actually to show you and I'm going to just give it a bit more space here. So it tends to be that I, I wrap up all my color correction. So let's say that we wrap up all my all our color correction. We haven't done it yet. Uh, in fact, one last thing that I would definitely do here would be go to the refraction here because I love these eyes, but I think they are too weak. So um, I'm definitely going to like blow blow them up a little bit so that I have a little bit more light on them. And also, I think they are also on the speculars. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, and on the emission as well. So I would definitely use the emission to do the glow. I'll do that in a second. And in this situation, you could do the glow inside the emission because, um, and as you can see here, I'm already kind of like affecting my refraction already does this. You see, I'm already lighting up the eyes a little bit. But in the situation of the emission, yes, this, as I think, is the only the only place where I would do the glow inside the color correction because this one is kind of inside the body, although it still realistically should be done after. So let's do it after. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my guns and I'm gonna show it after. So so okay. So after the pre mold, we're gonna have a little section. This is again, like I said, this is the way I usually work. So keep in mind that uh, it's not like I'm going to gonna force anyone to work this way. I work this way, but I'm gonna do a backdrop here, and I'm gonna sh say that this is the glow, uh, glows, uh, glows and glares, and um, and remember that this is after the pre mold. Reason why it's after the pre mold is because I don't want to affect the edges of the glow, and so. I'm going to do this by steps. Remember, we had all the AOV still here. So this is really helpful because you're going to use the AOVs to 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 make those glows, um, especially for certain things. So um, and of course, keep in mind as well that sometimes glares, glows and, and flares are put on grading or at the end. So this really wildly uh, um, it, it really changes depending on what you're delivering and depending on the type of project you're making. So if you are doing a highly stylized project and you have a smaller team, most likely you'll do the glares and the glows and the glints already in comp. But if you're working for a film or if you're working with a large team or if you're working on a very complex pipeline, it might be that you put the glares and the glows after. This is what we did, for example, in Sniper Elite. On the Sniper Elite 5 trailer that I directed and supervised, we actually did that after. So, And also I pushed a lot of the glares and the glints and the glows on grading and instead of comping. So, But hey, it's all the same, right? Like lighting, compositing, grading. For me, it's all the same. It's all kind of like backwards and forwards between these three departments to make the final product. So so you, you do them where you need to do them. That's how I feel at least. Um, okay, so... Glows, glows, glows. I'm going to start by glowing the eyes, and that will be a simple thing. We have 
actually we have two ways of doing it if you think about it like i can either do uh, using the object id so i can either go and use the object id or the crypto mat i don't have a crypto mat but you know what i mean i can either use this object id of the eyes to use as a glow mask i can do that or if I want to, I can also use the refraction to drive that glow. Or if I want to, um, I can also use the emission to to drive that glow. I might use the emission. I think that's probably going to be my my favorite way of doing that. So I'm going to do a test, two test, two two step glow. So I'm going to first of all to drive that glow, I'm going to use a shuffle. So the shuffle is going to basically drive out that layer that we want to drive the glow with. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say, okay, on B pipe, I want to bring up the emission. So emission will become RGB now. And then from there, I'm going to put a glow here. So the glow is going to be effect only. So I'm only using it as effect. The reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to comp more eyes on top. I just want to have the glow itself, nothing else. It's going to do effect only. Once I'm here, um, I'm going to now do two of them. So I'm going to have two glows. Um, I might just make the actual time to put eye glows and, and then do the other ones. So, um, so I'm going to start with the eyes um, and then I'm going to copy paste this well, actually, I'm going to use a merge node. I'm going to use a plus, probably. Uh, we'll see if I prefer to use a screen. I'm going to just do that. And then I'm going to just like select the whole thing here and then paste. And I'm going to use this for a two tier, a two tier, um, a two tier glow. Well, I don't need this shuffle though, um, because I don't need to shuffle it twice. I can usually just take it from there because we already have two. So this still looks looks a bit crap. Don't worry. Like I'm gonna make it work. Don't worry. So we are shuffling it from here. Um, oh, and actually, it needs to be like that. Um, so it needs to be like from here. So I'm shuffling it from here, and then I'm gonna put like a dot here. So it gets shuffled. Then it gets glowed, inner glow, and then outer glow. That's my plan, at least. So inner glow, I'm just going to leave it for a second like this. I'm gonna plus it together. So we have an inner glow here. Now, the inner glow, I might make it smaller. So let's say five of spread. Let's pump up the brightness a little bit um, to 1.3. I'm going to leave it as it is. And so that would be that glow. Now, remember, you could you could have also used the glow using the width channel. We, we've talked, I think, about this in a, in, in a long time ago, I think. At least it blurs all. Sometimes I think I've said something and then probably I find out that I haven't said it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but I, if I go to, <laughs> it's, I guess I'm showing my age. Um, sometimes I think I said something and I don't. Uh, yeah, so just to show you like like the difference here is that you could have also used the wit channel. The wit channel is a way of you controlling where you want the glow to happen. So I'm going to give you a side version here. So driving that through Godal's blue so this would be id set good old a so that means the width channel would be uh, id set good old a uh, blue so that would be the width channel of that and um, now if i go in here you see you see it glows just the eyes so the width channel is a method of you using a mask to glow just that place so you see here, I can like brighten this glow here of just the eyes, or I can make it a bit wider or a bit thicker. So in a in a way, there's two ways to do this. You know, again, like remember I said that there was so many other things. There, there's so many ways of doing the same shit in Nuke. It's like, it's so confusing sometimes. It's so confusing. But um, I swear to God, even sometimes I get confused. <laughs> so... So yeah, this is one way. I guess I probably should write here. Um, this would be the width channel. So so this would be the width channel method. Um, oh, <laughs> oh, this is cool. I didn't know that. Oh, this is awesome. Look at that. Grammarly is actually working inside of Nuke now. That is so cool. I didn't know that. I ju it just popped up. You saw that? Oh, look at that. 
Grammarly is actually working inside of Nuka. I did not know that. I, I that's actually awesome because, as as someone, uh, and now I wrote which, <laughs> as someone that uh, is not um, not uh, you know like I don't speak English natively. Sometimes I do have some struggles with English, so I'm glad to see that it that the Grammarly uh, plugin is actually working inside of Nuke. This is awesome. Um, this is really cool. I always struggle with with fonts and text and everything. I always have spelling mistakes on my on my backgrounds and on my nodes and everything. People are always joking with me about that. <laughs> okay, cool. So let's see here. Um, and yeah, so I was just saying this was one method. The reason why I didn't use this method, so just so you know, is that because I, I'm a control freak, freak, I like to control things really, really carefully, and so with that in mind, I prefer to have them separated because this way I shuffle out the actual pass that I want, and then I glow it, and then I can still mask it, or I can call it correct it, or I can... If I want, I can put a color corrector here, and I can call it correct this glow, or I can call it correct that glow, and for me, using the width channel is a fast way, but it avoid like it doesn't allow me to color correct it. It doesn't allow me to tweak certain things. I kind of prefer to um, I kind of prefer to kind of like um, to control stuff in detail. So okay, so let's go back to this. Um, this will be the inner glow. So um, inner glow, and then this will be the outer glow. Outer glow. Okay, cool. So inner glow goes merge goes merge like that, and then outer glow, which will be a bit wider. So I'm gonna go in here, probably brightness to two. Uh, I'm gonna view it through here, and then just like glow it and have like a bit of diffusing going on here. I'm gonna actually go in. I always like to exaggerate exaggerate it for at first. I first exaggerate and then I'll see how that looks. You know, so that kind of looks badass to me i guess you know this is a stylized trailer anyway so it doesn't really matter if it looks real or not who cares it's stylized um so yeah so this is the inner and that's the outer i like that i think this is cool when once they once it has the grain it's gonna probably look cool so yeah <clears throat> okay so this is the eyes now i'm gonna do the exact same thing but for the pings remember we talked about the pings on the armor so I'm going to just like go in here and I'm going to copy paste this entire thing. So um, and then I'm going to do the armor glows. Uh, this should be bigger, though. Like, I don't know why it's so small so that I can actually read what the hell I'm doing. Um, sorry, I'm just going to like do that. OK, cool. I can't believe this isn't crashed yet. Look at that. OK, so now different will be that I'm going to not use the emission, uh, but I'm actually going to use the specular. So the speckler was the pass that had all these nice glints. And remember, I did not call a correct this one because this is the actual original speckler. Uh, because we did call a correction on the other speckler in here, which was this one here. But this one is not the one I've done because I've you have this one, which is the RGB speckler that I've shuffled. But remember, the reason I why I shuffle things, because people sometimes ask, why, why is this so confusing, so many shuffles? The reason is because I, I like to keep the original if I need for something, you know, and in this case, I'm going to use it. So in C, you see here, I still have the original speckler. And then if I go to my RGB, I have my graded speckler. So that's kind of like how I, I like to do it. Um, OK, so let's say here, go back to this. I'm, I'll do the break in a second. Don't worry. Uh, I know we've been going on for more than 45 minutes already. But um, and I'll do the break in a second uh, and then we'll continue after the break. Don't worry, because we have a responsible stream. We always do breaks. OK, so the armor glows will be a bit different. So I'm, I'm going to try to ping these highlights. Right. So first of all, I'm going to try to pinpoint the brightest one and just see if I can find it. Um, I'm not sure if we have um, actually if we actually have something with exposure uh, limits. I think we do. Probably we're just going to play this back and see how that look, looks. So see if we can find anything with exposure limits. Uh, yeah, we do. You see, I see it on the armor here. So if I go back here a little bit, uh, there you go. So you see, that's the brightest spot, uh, which is with the zebra pattern. That's the one. So that's like 3.7. So it's quite bright. So I'm going to kind of like think about, OK, so um, I'm going to like use that as my reference. So my inner glow 
remember this this is the uh, glow that we were doing before we have a tolerance here so remember the tolerance means how much of the values we're going to keep so zero of course is going to keep the entire value remember we had a value of three there so if i put three of course it disappears almost and only that slays i don't want that um i'm gonna try with two maybe even with 1.5 and see okay let me just have a look so if i so what I'm looking for here, I'm going to do 303. So what I'm looking for here, if you're confused, is that I'm looking for specs of very bright areas on the scene. So now we only have like what we would call a spec pass of really highlights, of really, really pingy, pingy highlights. This is still too much. I'm going to go in and put it even more. I'm going to put 05. So I have even less now. And so now these are just pinging like that. Um, okay, so now that I have that, I, I might choose to have less saturation on them a little bit because it looks to me like they're a bit nuts. I, I'm actually going to remove the saturation completely just so I can have a look at them. So these are like the highlights now that I have. So so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this as my layer for, for the glow. Uh, now I am going to just try it first and then we'll see what happens i'm gonna i'm gonna use the same values in here on the outer glow as well so i'm gonna put also the tolerance of 0 05 and brightness of of one point well in here it probably has to be two because well i'll leave three um and yeah that's it really so let's see here so we have the inner glow and then we ping it now this is not going to do much because the inner glow, it needs to be a bit more spread. So I'm going to spread it maybe to 10 and maybe brightness to 1 and just see how that looks. Uh, so I get like these pings. Now 10 is too much. I'm going to just like ping it less. So uh, yeah. So what I'm looking for is to get this sense that we have these little white pings everywhere. Um, so let's see if that worked on this I think we need a lot more than what I've done here so I'm gonna just like go in here to a frame here and, and see how that looks so let's see here I don't I have so few I have so such few real estate on my screen because I'm I'm broadcasting in HD so it's, I'm not used to comping in HD okay so this is now pinging not pinging much I think I went too far with the tolerance I'm gonna just like drive it lower and have a bit more of it I'm going to do 0, 2 to see how that looks. And that's going to be the pings that I'm going to give. So I'm now getting overexposed pings of brightness. So this is me just faking some overexposure in purpose to try to get those pings to work. And now, and of course, remember that I I remove the saturation completely. Maybe that is not a mis Maybe that's not going to be good. Um, I might want to remove the saturation just ever so slightly and leave some of it still to back. And remember, though, that um, you could also use a screen if you don't want this to start to overexpose too much. Because if you want to keep the values that were there anyway, uh, you might want to consider a screen. Because a screen operation will bring the brightness and bring this pinging that you want, but still keep the values to the limit. So that means that what was the limit before will stay the limit. That means if we had a value of 3, which I think was what we had here, it will still still stay 3, which is a more correct way of doing the comp anyway because you don't want you don't want all these highlights to go so so bright that then it breaks your comp, you know. Um okay, so that's the inner. This is all an experiment. I I don't think I I don't believe I did this. Did I do this on the final shot? I don't even remember anymore. Let me just have a look. Maybe I did. Oh, yeah. No, I did. I just didn't name them that that well. So I'll go back to this and show you in a second. So I'm going to do the outer one now. So now the outer one is going to be a lot more. So I think I think I need to have 100 for the moment and just see how that looks. So again, I'm going to do a plus. And, sorry, screen. And then bring that in. So now this is going to look weird with color. So much color, though. So I'm going to just saturate it quite a lot and just get these pings to work. So... They look to me like they are two, uh, let's see here, so maybe five, and then brightness of f five. Yeah, that's starting to look nicer now. So now we have 
the pings coming in. Let's have a look at this in motion just to see how that looks. I'm going to save. Maybe that's a good idea. <laughs> I'm going to put this in full screen for you guys to guys and girls to see. Um, that's my black. Well, I'm actually, I just noticed that my black magic out is actually going to change it to XRGRB. Otherwise, you can't see it. So I'm just going to like give you like, that's my black magic video out. I'm going to see how these pings are working. Um yeah, this is looking cool. It's really fast though, I know, but but hey, you know, that's the way it is, right? So, uh where's my mouse? Uh sorry. Lost my mouse for a second, but this is what I'm trying to get. You see that? Um let's see if I can show you a You see that's what I'm getting. That's what I want. These pings, you see. These are really cool, actually, and, and I know, I know, you know, especially this one, that one, that one, and obviously, I know that this shot is so quick that you hardly notice it. But see, that just gives it a bit more life. I like those kind of things. Um, originally, I did that. I, I now I'm feeling that I went maybe a bit too far on it, and the eyes probably need a bit more pop. We'll we'll go to that in a second. Anyway. <clears throat> I'm going to do a break now because we've been on for a while now and we do a responsible stream on Hugo's desk. So remember, that's always the case. We're going to do a break um, for 10 minutes. Remember, it's always 10 minutes, the breaks. Uh, you can put a timer if you want to. Uh, I'm just going to bring in the giveaway. So don't remember, forget, don't forget that we'll have a giveaway. We'll do the giveaway, the first giveaway after the break. That will be for my course. And if you want to sign up to the giveaway, uh, first, we have a give like we're gonna have a giveaway for the um, uh, Shenzhen Labs Pan Tablet Medium, and then we're also gonna have uh, two uh, online courses. So I've um, I put in here um, there. So um, I see there's a lot of questions. Don't worry, I'm gonna go through them after we come back from the break. And when we come back from the break, we're gonna talk a bit more about the glows, and then I want to show you a few more things. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. I can see there's still it's like a hundred and something people here watching. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for supporting the stream. And, and this is really, really kind of you uh, because, you know, obviously the more people show up, the more people are here, the easier will be for me to have support, to have sponsors, to have giveaways. Because, of course, unfortunately, we live in a world that the numbers is all everyone cares. So the more numbers and the more views I have and the more people watching the more chances are that we're going to have more sponsor streams and more giveaways in the future. So thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for sticking the time to watch this with me. And don't worry that I, I am, for those of you that are British or English or if American, don't worry, I will finish the stream before the game. <laughs> I know a lot of people are waiting to watch England versus US. Um, at least my audience, I know some of them are. So don't worry, we'll, we'll finish, we'll wrap up before that, that game starts. <laughs> okay, I'll be back in 10 minutes. Um, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in 10 minutes. During the break, I will also have a message from my sponsor from Action VFX. They will give you a message. Um, but yeah, I'll see you all very soon. Uh, don't forget to stretch your legs, don't forget to get some water, and to rest your eyes for a minute. I'll be back in 10 minutes.
Hi, I'm Rodolphe Pierre Louis, founder and CEO of Action VFX. Action VFX is a visual effects stock footage company, and it is our mission to build the best and largest library of visual effects stock footage in the world. You might be wondering, though, what is VFX stock footage? And why are they so important to visual effects? First off, let's talk about some other names people use to describe what we do. You might have heard the terms like VFX elements, VFX assets, stock effects, stock assets. All these terms still refer to the same thing and can be used interchangeably. So what is it? Simply put, VFX stock footage is stock footage created specifically for use in visual effects. They are actual footage, not a software, but actual video footage of various elements like explosions, fire, smoke, fog, rain, that are captured and delivered in such a way that you, yes you, can add them to your shot to create some very realistic effects faster and cheaper than if you were to do it all for real on set. In visual effects, the field that deals with combining different visual elements together is called compositing. So you can have all these different elements and all these different layers, and it's the compositor's job to bring all that together to make it look as if it was all one shot. This is very common. Sometimes the shot requires elements that the compositor might not have access to, like a large fire or some snow, and that is when you'd go on the hunt for some high quality VFX stock footage. The process is simple. Once you find the footage that your shot needs, you can simply drag it to your scene and start working on making it look seamless. If you do it right, no one will be able to tell the difference. So why is VFX stock footage so important to visual effects? The first reason is, it considerably helps you get a more realistic result, even if you're not that skilled. Why? Well, when something is a real element, it already looks and behaves like the real thing. For example, this window fire element was shot for real, so when you add it to your shot, you're bringing the realism of an actual burning building with very little effort. Without VFX stock footage, you'd have to simulate that fire from scratch, which not only probably wouldn't look as realistic, but it would cost you a lot more time. Which brings us to the second reason VFX stock footage is so important. It saves you time, a lot of time, and time is money. VFX shots can get complicated very quickly, and if you're having to build out your entire shot from scratch, you're wasting precious time. Sure, some things have to be built by you, but most elements don't. And when you can find stock elements that are shot well, at high resolutions, have different angles, and are built with visual effects artists in mind, it makes more sense to use VFX stock footage. This is the number one reason the top VFX studios in the world consistently use VFX elements. They're able to reduce the number of hours spent on a shot, which in turn saves them a lot of money and causes less overtime for their artists. Brian Haynes from Crafty Apes put it best when he said, Action VFX gets me home to see my family. So in short, VFX stock footage is one of the best tools you can add to your visual effects arsenal. Use something pre-made and simply make it easily work for your shot while saving a lot of time, money, and still getting very realistic results. There are a few places you can get them online, and you can even shoot your own elements. Sometimes that's what's needed. However, if you check out actionvfx.com, I think you'll find that we provide pretty much everything you could ever need to create some awesome visual effects. And some of them are completely free. Our library grows every month, so we're always pumping out new content. I hope you enjoyed this video. We have a ton more tutorials that can help you become a better visual effects artist. So do also check them out on our website or our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe as well. Thanks for watching.
Okay, I'm back. Thank you so much for still staying here, and thank you so much for being here. I can see there's still 100 people here. We can continue with the workshop in a minute. Uh, don't forget that we have some giveaways today. I'm going to start by answering some questions and, um, and also like uh, jump into the first giveaway of the day. We have three giveaways today, actually. We're going to give away one uh, tablet, a medium tablet uh, given to us kindly by uh, Shenson Labs. Thank you so much for their kind and generosity for giving us the tablet. Uh, it's uh, very similar to this tablet here, although this one is the full one, the kit one. It's not this one specifically, it's the one just with the tablet. But um, I have this one here. I, I need to kind of still try it out and, and open it up and give it a go. Um, and also we have two giveaways from the course as well, from my new course, which don't forget that today my new course is 50% off today until Sunday. It's uh, Black Friday uh, as well. So while we're waiting for, while I'm waiting for some of the, for you, some of you to join the giveaway, I'm just going to check out uh, how the giveaway is going and also uh, answer some questions. So remember I told you that while I'm doing the workshop, I can't really talk much <laughs> during the, the workshop because I want to try to keep it easier for people when they're rewatching. I got a lot of problems. <laughs> Back in the day when I used to do these streams, people complain all the time that I was like uh, interrupting the, the stuff all the time. I don't interrupt anymore. Now we do it in a row and then we do the interruption. So for those of you that are here just for the nuke composting, you maybe want to come back in like 10 minutes or so because uh, we're going to do a bit of Q&A and then the, the, then the giveaway. Uh, and then if for those of you that are just wanting to the giveaway, then you are in the correct place. Now now is the time. So I'm going to going to put a timer for 10 minutes. We're going to just do a, a few Q&A. So I have no idea who asked first where the questions are coming from. I'm just going to like look through them as the if you have questions, just feel free to post them now. Um, so, but I'm going to like uh, scroll down to the questions and see if I can find some of them. I can't scroll down all the way up, uh, but at least I can go through some of them. So let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. See here. A lot of people are asking about the new course. Don't worry, the new course is going to be. Um, it's 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 available on my YouTube channel. You can find the trailer there and all the links to to buy it. The Black Friday deal is going to be announced on my social media. It's going to be until Sunday. So a lot of people are asking about that. Uh, I have a question here from Bazur CC. I hope I didn't mispronounce your name. Uh, he's asking, uh, do I get Hugo feedback too? Yeah, so any student of mine can get feedback for sure. Like all my students, I have 1,300 of them and we have a Discord channel. Um, I usually help them. I do private calls. I do private messaging. We also sometimes talk on the main channel, uh, on the Discord channel, where we have we have a private Discord channel just for the course. So yeah, for sure, um, I'm there and I can talk with all of you uh, and help you as much as I can. Uh, so yeah, so sure, I will I will do that. Um, I have a question here from Sergio Mar Marcelli. Sergio Marcelli, hope I'm pronouncing your name again. Uh, my question is, um, um, I use JPEGs for reflections and specs to do, uh, do this really matter to be EXR? Saves a lot of space. Well, Sergio, of course you can use EXRs, but you, you can use JPEGs, but I would really recommend you not to use JPEGs because JPEGs are not going to have any dynamic range. So you're going to basically clamp your images. If you're worried about space, maybe consider using EXR with DreamWorks compression because that becomes pretty much the size of a JPEG and you keep the comp you basically keep the dynamic range. It's a bit compressed, the quality goes a bit lower just like a JPEG does, but I would really recommend you to stay away from JPEGs for compositing. JPEG is a final format, okay? So JPEG is it's like QuickTime, it's like uh, AVI, it's like a, a, a finishing format. It's for you to deliver something. It is not a working format. Um, a working format should always be XR. Um, that would be my advice to you. And try to, I've had a lot of videos and a lot of streams where I talk about the compressions. Maybe check out my videos and I'm sure I've done that. I went through that as well. Let's see here, other questions here. Uh, there's a question here, um, where was it? Um, yeah, so Bazur uh, CC is also asking, am I too late for composting? I'm 38. 
No, I don't think you're late for composting at all. Like, why Why would you say that? You know, I'm, I'm 45, you know, and I'm still doing composting. So I, I don't believe it's too late at all. Like, uh, it, there's no really age barrier to be a composter. There's no age limit. As long as you're good and as long as you do a good job, you don't really have any problems of being older or younger. It's there. There's no, no such thing as have being too old to do composting for sure so i would recommend you to go for it you know i don't believe that's a problem as well and um, okay so let's see here uh okay so washington here is saying i love uh that you're really helpful in giving you an info this way i you don't have to do this but you're giving away your time i appreciate it oh thank you so much for saying that i, I noticed now there is no question but thank you so much for men mentioning it. your your words are you're too kind thank you so much for mentioning that um let's see here uh da -da -da, the questions here yeah so you see uh, emiliano here is saying i started with 40 years old and everything was wonderful so you see emiliano here is an example of someone that started when he was 40. i don't think the age is going to be a problem i i really believe that you can start whenever you want um, let's see here. There's a question here. Neutral99 is asking, what is the difference between FX, Houdini, and Nuke? So there's a huge difference. So Nuke is a composting application. A composting application is meant for you to gather all the renders and gather all the passes and all the footage and all the elements and finish the shot and basically put up all the layers together, almost like a Photoshop uh, type of level and you gather all of it up and then finish the shot. Houdini is a different thing. Houdini is a 3D application. That means you create 3D environments, you create simulations, you create rendering and lighting, and it's not to finish the shots. You basically render everything out and then you go to compositing to finish the shot. So that's the biggest difference. And um, let's see here. Khan Ibar has a question. Khan Ibar asks, my question is about when you work with geometry inside of Nuke. How you usually how you actually use axes and transform geos? Would you explain the difference? Well, a transform geo is really for you to just move the geometry in a specific space, right? The axis is a different thing. The axis node in Nuke serves mostly for referencing or for attaching things to it. So it is it meant it's meant for two different things, although they can be used both of them to the same thing but they are meant for different things um let's see here um let's see uh, deepan john hoy is asking deepan john hoy asks do your does your course have advanced composite yeah it does like i have advanced composite but i also have workshops that i'm still working on those workshops will be for sale at a later date but at the moment the the course has everything it has beginners mid and advance um has already some workshops there but it will have more workshops in the future for sure um okay hamed shami is asking will you share your streams on your youtube channel i can't find your latest showreel review stream well uh ahmed um i'm gonna show you uh, because I, I i i'm not surprised that you can't find it you know why <laughs> because um so, Ahmed, the problem now is that uh, YouTube has changed a few things. So, if you go to the YouTube channel, this is my YouTube channel here. You see, we have the home, which is the main place where we have the stream going. As you can see, I'm live now with 100 people watching. And then you have my, like, my predetermined playlists. But notice how YouTube now has split things into different parts. So, you have now videos, shorts, and live. So, if you go to videos you will only see the pre-recorded, uploaded videos that I've created. This means you only see here my podcasts and you see some of the tutorials that I've uploaded. If you want to see the streams, you need to go to the live tab. You go to the live tab and now this is just the live streams. There's no videos here. So um, Google has split this now. So videos are now alone and live streams are alone before we used to have all of them together. So if you want to look for some of my live streams they're all here you see i have the one i'm doing now and the showroom review from six days ago is here as well and then we have also the wonderful stream we did with ali barbosa you should check that out as well and then i have the rest of the nuke for beginner sessions we are currently doing session number nine 
Uh, but you see we have session number eight here, session number seven, six, you know, just keeps going all the way to my first live stream, which was two years ago, which was a calibration stream uh, celebrating the fifth anniversary of Yugo's Desk. So all the live streams are here uh, if you want to find them. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, more questions. Uh, DNA K is asking, how do you think composting will evolve in the next few years, not only in Nuke, but also in software like Unreal? So this is an excellent question, DNA K. So to answer your question, I would say that uh, at the moment, I, I really believe that composting is still going to be done in Nuke for large parts because Nuke is an industry standard. All the pipelines, all the companies have used Nuke. Everyone is using Nuke on their on their facilities, so it's gonna be it's gonna take years for it to go away. The same way that Shake took a long time to go away, and also the same way that After Effects kind of like you know a lot of people moved from After Effects to Fusion and then to Shake and then to Nuke, and people are always moving around. But Nuke at the moment is like an industry standard. Now, I strongly believe that I I see a future where Unreal will become more and more composting friendly, so that you can have composting because composting requires you to be able to comp footage and plates so that you can comp the green screen footage you can comp the other elements all together with the cg at this time as the th you know this is now november 2022 if you watch this stream in a few years please keep in mind that maybe it changed but at this moment unreal's tools for composting in terms of footage is, are quite weak you can't really pull the really good key inside of unreal you can't really handle the footage like you handle in nuke Udini has a composting element of it. That could be a future as well. So I can kind of see that Udini will probably evolve more and have more composting parts. Nuke will definitely evolve as it is evolving now. Nuke 14 will be out soon. And then I think that um, then I think that Unreal naturally, I think, will evolve to have more and more composting tools. But I think to be honest, I think this is gonna take a while. It's gonna take a while for it to kind of like happen, you know. Uh, so yeah. Okay, cool. Well, there's a lot of other questions here, but I can't be here all day. <laughs> so let's just do the first giveaway, okay? So uh, we'll go back to the questions later, don't worry. Um, I answered a few. Um, there's always way too many questions, um, So, but don't worry. I'm here, like I said, I'm trying to do the streams at least twice a month, sometimes three times a month. I'm, I'm, so I'll be here. I'll answer more questions, don't worry. So... Um, don't forget, the first giveaway is going to be my Nuke course. So I'm going to start with that one. Uh, we currently, I'm going to roll the dice here. We currently have, let's see, how many people do we have? We have 258 people signed up for this. This is cool. So 250 potential winners for this uh, Nuke course. And uh, this is my Nuke course, which at the moment is 50% off on Black Friday, all the way to Sunday. Uh, I'm going to go and do a winners here. So I'm going to pick up a winner. Uh, and let's see here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, just give me a second. And uh, thank you so much, Subham, for becoming a member of my n YouTube channel. Thank you so much for becoming a member. Much appreciated. Your name will now be uh, featured on the credits of my podcast and featured on the credits of my videos. So thank you so much, Shub, uh, uh, Sub. Uh, S uh, some ham. I'm sure I'm butchering your name. I'm sorry if I am, uh, but I'm trying my best. Uh, okay, the software is like, it looks like it's crashing. It still hasn't drawn a winner. Why is that? Sorry. Oh, okay, here it is. Okay, so hopefully this artist is here. I hope so. So let's see here. Uh, the winner of the nuke course this will be two courses i will give away this is going to be the first one and then we'll do the tablet as well so the winner the first winner is tarun verma tarun verma i hope i've pronounced your name correctly uh, and i hope you're here are you here um are you here tarun uh let's see here i don't see you on the chat but maybe you are you know it could be we are really behind always the chat is always very much behind um let's see here Tarum oh yeah uh, i'm here okay so you are called no knee <laughs> is that your name <laughs> so um let's see here how do i know oh yeah no it's it's you yeah i can see on your email yeah i can see that 
So congratulations, my friend. Uh, I can see that it's it's really you because your email also has that name. Congratulations, you've just won the Nuke course for free. Um, congratulations, so um, don't worry. In, later on tomorrow, I'll send you all the logins and everything. Uh, so yeah, and I uh, can't wait to see you on the Discord channel for us to go through everything. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for being part of the stream as well. So tomorrow I'll send you um, I'll send you an email with all the logins. Okay, congratulations, my friend. Congratulations. Okay, so let's continue with this. So we still have two more giveaways to do. So we what we're gonna do now? As I said, I'm I promise that I'm gonna stop before the game because I know a lot of people want to watch the game England US. So already people on the chat already mentioned that. So I'm going to like um, go back to the composting um, area uh, and then we'll come back do a break. And then do a bit of more Q&A and then wrap up the two giveaways that are left. We still have one more Nuke course to give away. And then we have the tablet. Uh, the tablet. This wonderful tablet. This is the medium bundle. It's not this one. So it's the Shenzhen Labs uh, mid uh, medium tablet that they have were very kind to offer to our audience. Uh, but yeah, um, I'll be back to this in a second. So I'm going to go back to Nuke. Um, just give me a second. So I'm going to go back to Nuke here. Um, let's see here. So if I go back to this thing, uh, where is it? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just going to go and put this here. Sorry. I just need like, yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay, cool. So now I have, uh, sorry, give me a second. Give me a second. I'm just like struggling a little bit here, uh, but I think I'm now good. Yeah, I'm, I'm good now. So cool. Uh, we're back. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, okay, where's Nuke? Nuke is here. Okay, cool. So let's see here if I can get Nuke going. Okay, cool. So before the break, I'm going to put a timer here like I usually do. So if you want to do the giveaway of the Q&A, remember to come back maybe in 30 minutes from now. Um, so, okay. Before we were, um, um, before we, we uh, yeah, la one last question I'm going to answer here. Don't forget that anyone that has bought the course today, don't forget that I will get to you. As it says on the, pay the, the PayPal link, it could take one to two working days for me to get everything processed and actually giving you everything uh, because I need to wait for PayPal to process the payment. So so keep, keep that in mind. PayPal is a bit slow sometimes, you know, so keep be patient with that. Uh, and I do apologize if you're waiting. Um, OK, cool. So as I was saying before, I was trying to get these pings of light now. Do they even work? Let's have a look at them uh, on the final. Where's my shoe? Uh, on the final shot here. So I have the depth of field, and again, it's important for you to consider that the glows, uh, depending on the shot that you're making, they might look better uh, before or after the depth of field. So, so keep that in mind that sometimes it will be more beneficial to put the glows after, since a glow is tends to be not part of the CG. It's part of the artifacting that you get from the lens and from the light. So effectively, from a realistic point of view, we could consider that maybe the glow sh should be before, like after, but uh, let's just keep them before. Keep in mind, though, that if, they, if you were to consider to put the glows after the depth of field, then you would have to also depth of field these passes because these passes are not with depth at the moment. So keep that in mind. And OK, let's go to the background and have a look at how this looks at the moment. So, yeah, the glows look look nice. Um, oh, what am I, why am I? Oh, yeah, let's just have a look here. And of course, you know, this is not the final thing, but just to show you a little bit now we so I'm glad that this is happening. So you see, there is a an, uh, we're experiencing a problem here and the problem is very common. The problem that we're experiencing and I'm going to show you what I mean. So you see here, uh, and this is kind of my fault. <laughs> Notice how when I look at the result of my glows here, they look fine, right? You don't, you don't really see anything. But notice if I look at the alpha channel and I, and I enable and disable these merge nodes, notice how the alpha channel is being affected. So this is a major problem. And um, this is because when I'm affecting and bringing these glows in, 
I incorrectly merged them as RGBA, and that's why when I merge them on top of the background, you see we have these nasty black edges. It's a very common practice that pre-multiplication errors happen, especially in After Effects, this is very common. So we get these really nasty black edges all over the place, uh, destroying our lovely CG. The mistake was done here because you see my merge nodes of me merging the glows are set to RGBA. So you kind of have to put them to just be RGB. You either have to go back into these merge nodes and remove the alpha channel so that they are just RGB merging, or you could remove the alpha and bring it back. Uh, either way could be done. Uh, you know, obviously when I copy pasted, I should have done this before the copy paste. Oh, don't crash on me. Come on. This is just the merge note. Okay. It didn't crash. So obviously I, I should have done this before the copy pasting because now I have to do it four times. Um, and I'm sure there's a, there's a really lovely script that does this automatically, which I don't know. So, you know, don't, you can stop already writing the comment that there's a script to do this. I have no idea what the script would be. And I have no idea what the Python thing would be to do something like that. So, so never mind. So um, yeah. So now the edge is gone, and as you can see, by taking away, um, t by taking away that 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 edge, now it looks properly. It looks like it was comped properly. Okay. So now that we have done that, that was on my list to, to show you. And this again, like I mentioned before, this is kind of like a very common practice of you using glows and and object IDs and crypto mats to glow stuff to either do glinting or glaring or even more complex things. And in fact, I'm going to show you how it looks on the final shot. So if you go in here to the final shot, this is the actual script, the production script that we delivered at the time. This is the actual script of what I finished at the time and we delivered to the client. Um, so if I if I go back here to my merge, you see I have I have actually did the glows after the depth of field you see here. And so... Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, so as you can see here, I'm doing the same process. I'm shuffling out my, well, remember this is the old shuffle. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's just because uh, this script was done before they made the new shuffle. So that's why you're still seeing this old shuffle here. But it's the same thing. The old shuffle, the new shuffle, they're both the same thing. They do the both the same thing. So I'm... Shuffling out the specular, um, then I'm glowing it like I did before. Then I merge it as a screen. So this is kind of like what it's doing. Mainly giving you this little lovely glint and glaring happening here. Then I'm also doing the same with the next one, which I didn't label them. So this is the same specular, but now it's the outer glow of the specular, inner glow of the specular. So these are now bringing in like this amount of glow coming in. I'm going to go into a frame where we actually see... What frame was it? I think it's frame, yeah, 150. I'm going to just go to 150 so we see more of those glows. So we can actually pinpoint them. There we go. And then from there, I did the same as well. I have the other specular. So we have this one here, that one there. And then I did even another one where I merged them together and have really the pings. I believe this one is the one that is pinging the most. And then that kind of merges in here. And then if I go back here all the way to the bottom, all the way to the bottom on the final shot, you'll see the difference that that kind of makes. It's a really subtle thing, you know, but, you know, it's it's subtle enough. If I now go back, I'm going to go to a better frame to show you this. If I go to like this frame here where we see more of the glow. If I go back here to where are the glows? If I'm gonna just disable them all, so if I disable them all, I'm gonna put my my video to so that you can see the actual entire thing. Um, so yeah, so you see now the full range. Uh, well, actually, oh wait a minute, no, you're not because what am I doing? <laughs> Sorry, that's the output of the other script uh, because I am not on that script right now. So that's the script. Sorry, I was opening the Black magic out for the wrong script. Um, what was it doing? Yeah, yeah. There, there you go. So I'm gonna disable this and enable. So I'm gonna just disable it and just see how that looks. Uh, am I viewing the correct thing? Let me just double check. Uh, oh yeah, and I was wrong. Looking at the wrong thing. Sorry about that. I was looking at the final render and not the actual tree. It's a bit slow, of course, because it's a comp, final comp. But I'm gonna disable this thing and just show you the difference between not having it and having it 
It's very subtle, but if you zoom in here, that's the amount of glow and extra light that is coming in through that glow setup. Very disappointing, I know, for glowing. I think, wait a minute. I think there's more glows here somewhere. Just a second. Oh, yeah, I have more here. So I have the emission, which I've made inside here, like I've explained to you, because it was inside the body, so I've made them here. But there must be more glows, because where are they? Um, yeah, those were the ones that were made that way. And I have some particles here. Oh, yeah, there we go. So now we have here some weight, weighted blur, which is kind of like bringing in some some extra layering of glowing. So I'm just going to like disable this and just see how that looks. Uh, can I show it? Come on. Wake up. Yeah. And then after that, yeah, we still have the sharpening and... Where is that glow coming from? Sorry, guys. I'm just like trying. Oh, I know where. I'm sorry, never mind. There's an extra thing as well that I put in here, which is a piece of stock. <laughs> I forgot about all that. So this is a piece of stock footage, which was denoised and color corrected. And it kind of looks like that. It's just a flare, really, um, coming in. I, I often do this a lot on my scripts, where I basically put a flare just to make it look cool, I guess. Um, this is just a piece of, of flaring. This is like a like a piece of stock that I bought. Um, don't even remember. I don't think it's Action VFX. I think it's someone else. And then I did the color correction. Then I merged it together. So that's number one. And then the other the other one as well is that we have some particles on top as well and all sorts of things. So yeah, there's a lot of things going on here. And I think also I have glows coming from the actual, from the actual heat as well in the particles. Yeah, there we go. So the particles themselves also have some glow as well. And that's probably where the glow is coming from. Um, I probably was in a rush. I forgot to put a crop note here. <laughs> Should have done a crop here uh, to try to save some performance here. Um, okay. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> I like this comment that I have on the chat here. Uh, Monshin Parker is saying, nice you are being real about not knowing Python or scripting. No, I mean, I know a little bit, but I don't know enough to grab to brag or to say that I know it. No, I don't. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you so much, uh, Demali uh, Baduri, for becoming a member. Uh, thank you so much. Much appreciated. Your name will now be on the credits of my videos and on my podcast. So thank you so much uh, for that. Okay, so let's... Uh, <laughs> I guess I guess it's... Uh, it's a... It's a um, you're, you're right, it's a dramatic thing. It's not really going to affect much, but it's going to affect enough, you know. Because at the time at the time of, of doing this, like, this this is not even finished. I mean, these, these kind of shots take a long time to finish. This is not even finished, not even by a long uh, stretch. Also, I, I'm not happy with this depth of field. I think I would tweak it. I think, I'm not sure why the depth of field is so blurred. That's weird. Uh, oh, yeah, I probably have too much depth of field here. It's been a while since I've done this. Since I've done this shot, so I don't even remember exactly what happened here. Okay, but I think I think you're all with me when when I'm saying that that would be the way that I would affect the glows and the glints. Now, one extra one that I would also sometimes do, and this could definitely be done with a Sapphire plugin, or you know, you don't need to use. Um, you don't need to use the the stuff that comes with Nuke for this that I'm about to show you. But there is, you know, as much as it's really bad, there is a glint effect in Nuke, which I often use as well. Um, and I, I would say that that for that, I would probably pick up using, uh, you know, um, let's, well, let's actually try this out. And I'm going to show you what I mean. So um, I'm going to go in here to my eye socket here, which is that one. And I'm going to just show you the glint, you see. The glint node actually is quite better than most people give it credit for. It does a pretty good job with glinting. And, and you can kind of glow it and you can kind of like, um, uh, you know, like fix the tolerance. And you can kind of like do some odd rays to it as well. And I mean, there's quite a lot of things that you can kind of work on. it. I usually tend to make it separate and then merge it onto on top you know so i i would put a merge node here i would like do this and then let's see here see um i'm gonna do a, not an over of course it would be a screen operation and it would be also again i'll just do rgb because i don't need uh rgba i should have done that from the beginning 
Uh, I used to have, when I was still at the mill, I used to have um, a merge node on my script, on my on my toolbar, which would be a merge node that would already be pre-selected with RGB only, not RGBA. But yeah, so these kind of effects usually tend to be done with, partic with Sapphire plugins, but you can kind of really do some really cool stuff with glinting as well, using the glint node. Now, the glint node alone is not going to cut it, but the glint node together with the glow is going to do some really cool stuff. So that's usually how I how, how I approach it so that I can kind of glow it a bit more. Also, I tend to like defocus it a little bit so that it gets a little bit more softer. So it looks a bit more realistic. I'm going to just do a 0.5 of, of depth of field here. So it looks a bit more realistic. And then when you merge it together, you kind of get like this kind of like cooler like glint coming into the eye. It's a bit too much though. So I'm gonna just like lower it a bit. So let's say 25 of rays, just no, that's probably too little. It's a matter of you just like tweaking. Now, if you don't want to glint with rays, you can just do two rays as well. And if you want, you could rotate it to 90 degrees and then you can start like, you know, obviously this is now becoming a bit more robotic, but you could like make it brighter and you can make it uh, let's see here. So if I do max and let's see here, I probably should use, yeah, I probably should open it up a little bit more and then do odd rays and then do that. And now it's going to start to look like the Terminator. <laughs> That's not going to work. I'm going to just like lower the glow here and then go into the glint here and then just lower the, I'm going to make it longer, but the steps need to glow. So Need to put more steps so that it has more quality. And then I guess the tolerance as well will be slower and the gamma will be also lower. So so now I'm having like these eyes coming through them. So <laughs> the glint node is quite cool actually. I, I think it does some cool stuff, but a lot of people like don't use the glint node. They just start using like uh, sapphire plugins or or special like plugins for nuke. That that also works, of course. But uh but I like it. I li I kind of like it. Uh okay. So this is just a, a, a little bit of a jokey thing here that I was doing. Now, other things that I tend to do with the glint is this, you know, so I can, there's also a glare note as well, but we'll get to that. So th this is all my objective, trying to show you a little bit of the things that I tend to do to try to bring in some some kind of artifacting into nodes to, to the nuke script. Um, I'll show you in a minute. I'll show you in a minute the script, the final script, and just go through it and just show you exactly what's going on there. And um, not that I remember completely what I've done. This was years ago, but, you know, like at least I, I got permission from the client to show it. So now I can show it. <laughs> so this is always a problem, like like production stuff. Uh, you have to go through hoops. And I kind of got permission from the client to show it. And that's why we are seeing the, re the real production script. Uh, cool enough, though, that the last project I did, the uh, Sniper Elite 5, really cool that they actually I actually got permission to show that as well so now I'm gonna be able to show some of those scripts and some of those composites and some of that CG as well which is really cool like I can't wait to do that and I can't that's gonna be material for my course uh, for the updated version of my course because I'm updating the course right now to Nuke 13 and Nuke 14 and that's also gonna be material for the YouTube channel which is gonna be cool okay so now Talking about the the armor glinting that I was talking about, like using this uh, speckler pass. Um, I'm just gonna like use another shuffle here. And as much as I think that maybe perhaps I'll use the reflection instead of the speckler uh, to the, well, eh. no, I'll use the speckler, that's fine. I'll use the speckler with the glint again. So, so again, same thing goes for this. This is of course more for more nutty if you start like really going for this. So I would say that if you want to do some artifacting, like some really oddball artifacting, you can start like stre stre stretching these these glares and having like more stepping on the quality of it. Then perhaps maybe put effect only, of course, after you're a bit more done. I'm going to just like lower, uh, give it a bit more tolerance so we have less of it. And then a larger one. And of course it, well, it's probably too much. Um, and now, of course, on the glint, I'm going to just do effect only. And then I'm going to do the same that I was going to was doing there. So I'm going to put a defocus node here and then I merge it on top as well. So if I go in here, I'm going to just like check it really to see if it works. 
Um, and I'm inventing stuff, by the way, because this is not on the final script, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to just like go in and put like two of the focusing here. Put a crop node because it's starting to kind of like go beyond the boundaries and then kind of put it on top. Of course, again, I am I am did this wrong. I need to put a screen operation and then put RGB. I just want to make sure I don't affect that alpha channel. Um, half of my time comping is really trying to take care of that alpha channel. Now, this is looking a bit silly, of course, but that's the point. Like, we start silly and then we go progressively better. So the whole point of this is I'm going to start, like, getting less color going into it. So it's a bit more subtle. So we got like a lot less color into it, um, and perhaps even more, even even more would be to color correct it a bit. So I would probably ping the highlights a bit, and then contrast it a bit and, and reduce reduce the gamma maybe so that it's a bit more contrasted, and then that kind of goes on top. So again, still too much. I'm just gonna lower that. Uh, yeah, so that's it's supposed to be just subtle, right? It's still not too subtle, but it could look cool. This would need some time for it to work. Uh, perhaps maybe glinting not so much, maybe doing only 200 instead of 300. I think 300, 200 is enough. So, so the see, this is a one way of starting to do some artifacting, lens artifacting, diffusing. Obviously, I'm exaggerating a bit, and this is a bit too much, but. You get the picture. I, I think you get the picture. That's the whole point of this. It's to, to kind of show you one way of doing it. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway. Okay, so <clears throat> we went through a lot of things I know already. But let me just... I think I need to kind of show you a little brief moment. Like, I, I want to kind of show you a little bit. Because as I said, I was trying to do this workshop. And I, I, I feel like it's really difficult to do this workshop live because I've done this shot already. And, and I, it takes a long time to do a shot like this. It takes a long time. So I can't really replicate the whole thing. I think the, 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 the easiest way really f to wrap up this entire thing, to wrap up this session and to wrap up this nine class session that we've done with this shot is to just kind of show you the actual final script. And I, th I think it's going to be give you the easier route to try to understand how how this worked and um, and so with that in mind i'm gonna just like show you really quickly before we do another break um and then do the last giveaway i'm gonna just show you really quickly how this works you know so just like before like we did on the other script on the workshop script we went through the whole thing and put all the shaders and once i'd done that uh, i on the background it didn't really change the gi it didn't even denoise the GI. Remember on the workshop, we denoised it. I didn't end up denoising it. At the time, it was going to take too long to denoise all 60 shots. Because remember, this trailer has a lot of shots. So it's going to take too long. But I would definitely denoise it now. Especially because my computer is much faster now. Uh, on the diffuse, I didn't do much as well. I did color correct a little bit the direct light. You see here, I contrasted it a little bit more. So this is nothing more than... A multiply of 1.5 and a gamma of 0 0.8. This is just to ping the light, especially the light outside. And this is done in purpose so that when I do the bouquet, the depth of field, it pings that bouquet and that depth of field. That's kind of the point of doing that. And then the refraction didn't touch it, didn't do anything to the refraction because there's no refraction. The reflection, though, um, I did ping it a bit more because I, I was really interested on getting some of these highlights a bit more visible. And I know it's it's a bit fake, but it just, again, with the depth of field, you kind of want to ping more your light so that when you defocus it, it looks nicer. Um, and then what else did I do? Yeah, so we also have like the speculars here, again, pinging the speculars quite a lot. Um, if you look here... I'm multiplying it by six. It's insane, I know. But remember, the whole point of this is to ping it enough so that when we put the depth of field, it looks a bit more realistic because it tends to be that that bouquets quite like they they really go off or go crazy when it's a really de de like a really low f stop, which is the case of this shot. Uh, so once this is all done, this is just the background, of course. Um, once this is all done here. I'm going to just like open this up a bit more so you can see it a bit better um, so that you see the shot a bit better. Um, yeah. 
once this is all done uh, and this is rebuilding the shader in, and again, the only differences that happened here were these ones. I only have these three nodes here. So these are the three color correctors that I put in. You see, that's the original with nothing, and then this is the original. So as you can see, this is nothing more than just brightening the highlights, giving more tonality here to these reflections, giving more pings into these lights, giving more pings into this lamp, giving more ping into this rooftop. Just in my desperate attempt to, to get a cool bouquet. <laughs> so, uh, pinging. What I mean with pinging is like to just ping it, to make it brighter. That's my idea. Apologies if it's not coming through through the translation. <laughs> so, then I did some color correction. I have two nodes here. I have a, a general color correction, which is pushing everything a bit lower and then grading it on top. I think the grade node is not doing anything. No, that's just the leftover grade. But in here, I'm literally reducing the gamma, contrasting a little bit, reducing the darkness of the shadows, and, and again, making brighter the midtones, just again to get those highlights to be more contrasted when I put the depth of field. Then I finally pre-molt, because this was not pre-molted yet until this moment, um, and I pre-multiply it with its alpha channel so that I can put the background. Now, on this side here, we talked about this. This is the matte painting, the wonderful matte painter done by David Gibbons. Huge 20K matte painting with some sky here and a moon. This is the entire 20K matte painting that we used for all the shots, all 60 shots. Um, and then once that's done, it's placed into the 3D system. I have a sphere there, you know, like I, we talked about this before camera from the from Maya the sphere is there for the sky I had the geometry as as a placeholder here just so that we could see where the sky should be not using the geometry I've disabled it by the way really advise you to disable geometry inside of nuke because it really slows down nuke it becomes a really tricky thing to sometimes deal with it that's done there. Uh, scan line rendered, uh, not rendered, but that's that that's the output. And then I did a bit of color correction again, bringing the highlights a bit more. So this color correction is just literally just making it brighter. Uh, again, reducing a little bit of the midtones and, and increasing the highlights. Um, that's kind of what I did there. Cropped it, and then that's the entire. Then there's another section of the matte painting here, which is the mountains reefed. Um, so. The mountain section, which I've separated, so that so that I could actually get, so I've merged it, and then inside the scan line render here again, camera's looking there, and then I have like these kind of mountains here, which are just cards. It doesn't matter. Uh, from this point viewpoint, it looks just fine, um, and then that gets kind of like merged out um, as a layer. I have it a little bit of color correction here again to make the highlights of the. The thing brighter. This is part of the matte painting from by David Gibbons as well. Have a little depth of field there, just a little bit of defocusing. I know we're gonna get even more defocusing once we put the Z defocus, but this was just me on an attempt to get it a bit more defocused. Um, and then uh, let's see here. Uh, what else did I do it here? Yeah, yeah, okay. So then from here, uh, from this point on, we then merge it onto the background. So we have now the merging of the sky with the mountains. And as you can see, the kind of match and they kind of look correct. This is all not a problem. All of this bottom here, this doesn't matter at all because it's going to be covered by the CG. That's the CG. CG mostly covers everything, but there is a moment or two here where we see the sky and that's why we have to keep that in mind so this is now you see we see as we see the sky in the beginning i've had to render motion blur on the scan line renders because we have to add motion blur to the sky and to the mountains sections reason for that is because the cg has baked motion blur now this thing here the motion blur is being done by this by the multi sampler um, and then I, I think I believe the both of them are with the multi sample, aren't they? Uh, yeah, exactly. So, so that's done by there. And then, of course, once that's done, once that's all merged and and all ready to go, 
I then do a PG bokeh. Now, I know on the workshop we use ZD Focus. I, I don't use the ZD Focus node in production. I use the, Z, the, the PG bokeh. PG bokeh is much better, um, much more powerful. And so I, I, I just feel like it's a better node overall. This entire thing is is uh, using a real lens. So I have a 16 mil, which is the lens we used, and I have a 1.2 f-stop. I'm kind of pretending that I'm using my 1.2. Uh, well, there's no... I don't have a lens that is f1.2 with a 16, so I'm lying a little bit. <laughs> but I do have I do have an 18 mil that does 1.4, <laughs> so it's close enough. So it, I'm I'm faking it a bit. Like 1.2 is a bit too extreme for such a wide lens. I do not believe that actually we have there is exactly that there is actually a lens like that in the world at the moment. I don't believe so. I don't think there is a 16 mil with an f-stop of 1.2. I think the the widest lens that I've met is 1.4. I think uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's another lens. Maybe an older lens. I don't know. Uh, film format 35 because that's the the background. Um, that's the back plate, and that's it. Like that's the bouquet. Now, remember I told you about the, all that color correction that I put in. So the color correction is coming to now. It's really gonna help it. Um, so I'm gonna just like show you what I mean. So remember, I had all this kind of extra glowing and extra thing. So if you look at the PG bokeh here, you see all these little pings of bokehs that happen here are really happening because of those three color corrections. You see, if I disable the three color correctors plus these two, so if I disable all, tr all of the color correctors, notice how flat the bokeh and the depth of field is. So the color correction is not just um, ju not just like giving it more contrast, but also making the bouquet a bit more realistic and in, in contrasting that background because a lot of times the bouquet that's how it looks when you take photos, you know. So um, also on this shot here, I'm using this thing. I'm using this thing. This is really old. <laughs> this is from Andy Kramer <laughs> from the plugin he has from Optical Flares. Um, so that's, that's kind of like what I'm using there. I should really get some new ones. <laughs> I should go out and film some. I actually, well, this is so silly. I actually shot a bunch of bouquets. Uh, I did. I shot a bunch of bouquets for my, my short film for Oak Lake. I don't know why I don't use those. That's a bit silly. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, so we go into the depth of field here. I'm just Give it a second for it to wake. This is the this is the problem of PG Bokeh. It's slow as hell. So here we go. Now it's back. Um, okay. Did I disable the color corrections? No, I left the color correction. Um, yeah, Video Copilot, man. It's the, it's, it's, it's the shit, isn't it? Okay. So now we've done all of that. We are not going to go to the main character. Main character here. Uh, I'm going to go to frame 50, which is the... Well, the frame that, that you most see it is this one. I think it's like this one or this one. Again, merging all the passes, all the AOVs, everything, and then what do I do here? So first of all, um, as I showed you on the lighting, I'm actually intensifying the lighting quite a lot. This great note here is a tree multiplication, so I'm pushing the lights a lot. This is too much, by the way. I should have went back to CG to do this, but I didn't because I didn't have time. So that then gets merged. That basically gives you this much more light. It's really lighting up the character. Reason I did that is because I like he's inside a barn, right? So he's inside a barn, and inside a barn there's not a lot of lights. It's not like they have flashy lights inside a barn. But I mean, it looks better with more light. <laughs> what can I say? Um, then I have some some of these scratches. Um, then I have some a grade here. So I'm putting in the scratches as a as a mask into a grade node uh, there, and then I multiply it on top. So the scratches are giving me this much scratchiness. Then I put the subsurface scattering, which is in, in existing. Then I have the refraction. Now the refraction, I'm lighting up his eyes uh, so that it's a bit brighter. So I'm color correcting that. Then the reflection, I'm actually adding more uh, light and also, uh, what am I changing here? Uh, just a second. I actually don't know what I'm changing there. What is that? Oh, I didn't actually end up doing it. <laughs> so I'm only literally just like making it brighter again, just to, to really have these nice pings on, 
on depth of field. Specular light, I push the specular light down and then up, so I have like a, a much higher contrast ratio on the specular highlights. And then the emission is giving me these glares and glooms that happen on the eyes, and then I'll get merged together. Then in here I have some color correction, individual color correction. I have like a color correction for the horns. I kind of felt like the horns weren't getting contrast enough. Like you see all this really beautiful light that happens on the horns here. I wanted to see more of that. And I like this overexposure going in here. I think this is cool. And then I put an inner body. So I, I was a bit upset that I could still see the interior. So I turn it down so that we actually have a more mysterious character. So we... We kind of don't see as much inside. I think it, it looks much nicer. And then the armor, uh, which is just brightening up the armor. Uh, and and then we go to depth of field. Um, now, the depth of field is done, as I showed you on the other thing. I did a color edge so that we would extend the edges. This is mainly for the depth of field not to break the edges. And that's how the depth of field is looking. Again, it's the same bouquet. I'm using a 16 mil with a 1.2 f-stop and a 35 mil um, backplate with some bloom and the bouquet set to tree. Um, and then again, using the iris. That's how it's looking at the moment. So that should be a match to the other, sh the other part. Now, let me just really quickly show you what would happen if I would disable all these grade nodes, um, like I would show you, like I showed you, all these pings, um, you know. Uh, so wait a minute, I'm not disabling the correct. No, I'm, I'm yeah. So there you go. So that's how it would look with nothing. So that's just the depth of field with a very soft light, and this is with my new lighting. So. I know this is a bit awkward because I'm really changing the lighting of the scene, but notice how this looks to me a bit flat. And I, we've had this discussion many times on this show, on the streams. I kind of like to do color correction in CG on the passes. I, li I prefer to do color correction through the AUVs. I, I don't like to do color correction at the end. I, I feel... I kind of feel like it's a waste of time to do color correction at the end because you have all the AUVs, you have all the passes, you have all the all the wonderful cryptomats and object IDs. So why are you doing color correction at the end? So I really think this looks better, at least in my opinion. I'm the one directing this anyway. I'm the one supervising. So who cares what else? who else thinks about it? <laughs> I, I like it. So again, like I said, I'm making a bit more mysterious inside the helmet here. I'm bringing more overexposure into the highlights. That's the whole point of this. Now, on top of all of that, um, you know, I also have the glows that we've just discussed. So I have all these glows coming in, just like we discussed, and then it gets merged on top of the background. So, and if you give it a second, you'll see it. So that's how it looks. Um, now, again, let me just show you real quick what would it look like without all that color correction? So if I disable all that color correction, plus the color correction of the background as well, so all these grade nodes, all these grade nodes, and I disable them all. So, uh, oh, wait a minute, I disabled something I shouldn't have disabled. Um, <laughs> Mish trying to show something, and then I disabled something I shouldn't have disabled. What, what did I do here? So it's these ones. That I need to disable, and then these ones as well, and then what else did I disable? I think by mistake. Oh yeah, no, I know what I did. I disabled the wrong merge node. That's why. This one, and then these two, and then the two merge nodes, and then the color corrections, and that should be it. So if I disable that, now it should work. So you see, it looks really beautiful. Don't get me wrong. Uh, my team did an amazing job in CG, but it it looks very dark because they're inside a, a barn, right? And this basically makes you focus on the character. So you see in here, you're looking at the whole thing, looking at the background, the foreground, looking at him, looking at the sword. And as you put in the, all of this stuff, then you focus your attention into the main character. It's almost like the color correction is pushing him out of the background and making him a bit more three-dimensional. 
I like that a lot. I, I like to do those things. I like, and this is a very typical thing that you do on set when you're doing film. You usually light up the artist, the main character, the main actor. You end up putting some fake lights. So this is what I'm doing here. I'm literally working on this like if I was on set. You know, I, I if I was on set, I would never, I would never just leave the shot like that because if i was on set i would put rim lights and i would put extra lights and all these fakery reflectors and bounce lights and bounce boxes we do a lot of fakery on set so i really want to incentivize everyone watching to do fakery and cg as well because why not this is all this is all fake anyway so it doesn't really matter it's all fake anyway going back to this thing i'm almost done um now only really left is really just the particles you see i have the fire here did a bunch of color correction to it then did glows to it more glows more glows to it a little bit of sharpness uh, going in and then it kind of goes into the shot so so this is the version of him without that uh did i enable the merge the color correct yeah i did um, and then after that, you put the first fire on the sword, and then I put the other fire, which is on the horns. Now, the one on the horns started like this. We then did a U-shift to green, because the client requested for it to be green. Then we did some color correction to tone it down. It was too much. Then we put some glows, inner glows, outer glows, some cropping. And that goes into the screen here. It goes into the horns here. Then I have these particles, which get a little bit blurred, um, and they are being served as an, a, a forward pass so that we get some distortion going on. So I'm having, um, I'm having like some, this is very subtle though, but I'll, I'll show you. So this is like just displacing the horns. This is just to make it look like there's heating displacement going on below the horns. And then, of course, I put the horns back. So I the horns and the glow and everything in between. Once that's done, we have the particles flying around everywhere here. And these particles get color corrected and merged. So I have the particles coming in. It just gives us a sense of speed, really, to be honest. Then I have that flare that I talked about, which I've merged on top. Gives it some atmospherics. Um, you know, just give it a bit of love. Then from there, <laughs> I know this is called Toby Fix. It's because Toby did this little script and then I, I started calling it the Toby Fix. This is nothing more than grading dramatically the shot, clamping it to hell, putting a weighted blur into it, grading it even more, color correct it even more, crop it a little bit and then merge it on top. And that just gives it a bit of bounce glow into it. It's it's on this on this specific shot, it's very subtle. On other shots, this worked better. You know, so it's it's kind of like a hit and miss sometimes. Then I have some lens tweaks. In this stage, I remove everything except the RGB because at this stage, I don't need any more passes. So there's no point of me using all these passes that were still here. And then I do some final color correction. Like I said, I usually color correct inside of Nuke. So I, I and, and and of course, with that you need some responsibility. I only color correct inside of Nuke because I have a black magic video out, uh, and then you can kind of like yeah, I'll show you. Um, so uh, I'll just put it here. So I have like this here. Well, I, I need to like show you on this screen here. So if I go to five here, so you see, that's my video output. That's a ten bit display calibrated in and black on a with a black magic video out so i'm watching all of that uh, through there then i have my scopes down here i don't know i don't think you see it and then i normally have some more scopes um, i don't have them open at the moment but it, I'll, I'll open them up so i can show you just show you really quickly so i use i use this thing and I, the reason i'm showing you this is because if you're going to do color correction inside of compositing you need to really be a bit responsible and have the correct equipment for it so you see this is my scopes here see so all of that is the vertical screen here with all my scopes my vectors my highlights my uh, my false uh, version my false color version all of that is there 
Because if you're going to do color correction, you need to make sure you have the equipment to do it. Like, otherwise, you're going to break the shot. So that's keep in mind that. I'm going to just, like, go back to my script. I'm going to just remove the output here, and I'm going to kill my spec, like, because I, I need to kill this this thing, because otherwise I can't see your chat. Um, so uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, so here we go. Um, okay, cool. So after I removed that pass, I did some color correction. Color correction, color correction. Really simple. You know, I just have... I'm tweaking the temperature a little bit, so I'm making it a bit colder. Just because I thought it was a bit too warm, so I'm making it a bit cool, colder. So we have, like, a bit more dark blues and dark gray going on here. And then I just finished it off with this thing. This is a radial doing a vignetting. So I basically have an outer vignette and then an inner vignette. Again, my attempt to make the the people actually... Well, actually, one thing I should do here. I'm just going to like do one thing here. I'm going to remove my... Because uh, I have my black magic out is outputting the old script. I'm going to just like disable that. Close it. And that's it. And then I'm going to open up the black magic output because you can only have one output at a time. Um, so I'm going to have to activate it here. Uh, apologies for that. I'm just like really quickly just doing this here real quick. So I am. Um, this is Nook 12. I had to use Nook 12 for this because um, this script doesn't open in Nook 14. I don't know why. I haven't figured that one out yet. I need to kind of do a bit of troubleshooting. Um, yeah, so that's the black magic out now, should now be going on here. There you go. So now you can see the full screen. So I'll show you the full screen in a second. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, Sejal, uh, again, Sejal, thank you so much for being here. You're always so kind giving me my t your time and, and moderating the chat. Uh, so thank you so much, Sejal, and much appreciated for you to moderating the chat. Uh, you can always go back, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but when you're watching a YouTube stream, you can always go a little bit f back because the pre-recording, you can still watch it. You can go to the, to the past. Basically, it's like a, it's like a VOD. You can still watch it, uh, even though if, even if you haven't watched it from the beginning, I promise I'm going to do a break soon and then the last giveaway, and then we are going to wrap up before the game. Um, but, um, yeah, so last thing here, um, uh, last thing here. <laughs> 235 unreal disc unread discord messages well that's because you are viewing all the channels i have that's why and um, all the channels i have because i'm involved on at least 20 different channels on discord so that's why uh i can guarantee you that i answer all my students that's for sure i always answer my students um my students are always my priority I can tell can tell you that uh, but hey, if you're thinking about that, have a look at my emails. My emails are oh, it's not on now. But if if you would have seen it on, I think I have like three thousand emails or something like that. It's a lot. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you see, that's because I have so many different channels. My email is off, so you can't really see it at the moment. Anyway, going back to this again, this vignetting here, um, it's basically again trying to make you focus on your attention into the character. I then have a little bit of a clamp. This is mainly for me to just control the image when I'm converting this to H.264 and everything. I then have a little bit of sharpness going on using a log to lin. I would probably use the 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 machine learning node now uh, uh, because I didn't have it at the time. But as you can see, sharpening this up just makes it a bit more uh, believable. It makes it a little less CG-ish, I believe. Um, and then I, I thought, then I have some chromatic aberration, uh, and then I have the lens distortion, um, and then I have some final tweaks on the grade, and then we deliver. That's oh no, sorry, I still have the grain. This is an actual piece of grain, uh, filmed, uh, 45 millimeter grain. I'm then using a soft light to put it in, and then grading it, and then I still have a little bit more grain even on top, and then I, I do it. So. If I show you this, this is the final version. So you see, without all this lens stuff on the end that you saw there, which was the grain and it was the vignetting and the final color corrections, 
it would have looked like that. So that's without lens distortion, and that's without vignetting, and that's without grain. That's without any of that stuff. And then, of course, all that stuff just... It's a bit too much, maybe, because it's a highly stylized trailer. I feel like, in hindsight, when I look at this now, after years later, now I think, you know, as an artist right now, with my current taste, I probably wouldn't have done so bright. Probably would have done it more uh, subtle. But, you know, you evolved as an artist and you get, like, sometimes you prefer one thing and sometimes you prefer other things and you kind of change a bit with time. I think I would have done it a bit more subtly. But yeah, this is looking cool. I think I think it's looking good. I still like this trailer, although it's a bit dated, the CG, but you know, it's 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 what it is. Anyway, this is now the script. You've seen the final script. Uh, I think this workshop is now done. Um, so we've had nine sessions of this workshop. Um, I'm gonna jump into a new workshop next month. So I'm gonna jump into a new shot. Because uh, as I said, I'm doing this every month. Every month we're doing a Nukes uh, composting uh, stream live with some giveaways. Um, and then we do the showroom reviews as well, uh, as well with some giveaways. So, but yeah, I think we, I've talked for way too long. We still have two giveaways to do. So we're going to wrap up the stream with that. So we have still one Nuke course to give away. And then the tablet from the lovely folks at um, Shansen Lab. So um, stick around. I'll be back in 10 minutes. I'm going to do a final break. You'll have the break, and then you'll also have a, a word from our sponsor. And then um, and then I'll come back for, to wrap up with some final Q&A and the final giveaways. And I hope you've enjoyed... Uh, I hope you enjoyed the, the workshop so far. I really hope you've liked it. I hope it was beneficial to you. I hope you've learned something. Please make sure to tell me in the chat and give me some feedback if you didn't like the, the, the workshop or if you have something to say about the workshop, just go for it. Uh, okay, I'll be right back. I'll be back in 10 minutes exactly, so you can put a timer if you want. Uh, and then after the, break, after the break, we'll do some Q&A and then the final giveaways, and then we wrap up. So I'll see you very soon in about 10 minutes.
Hey, Luke Thompson from Action VFX here. I wanted you to know that our Black Friday sale starts on November 22nd at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and only goes until November 25th. So you only have three days this year to take advantage of these awesome savings. During this time, you'll be able to get 55% off all of our VFX assets. This even includes our new stuff, like our new explosions, and our space category that has planets and meteors, and even our new variety packs. In total, we've launched over 40 collections just this year. So check out all the new stuff. I guarantee you're gonna see something you haven't seen before. And if a subscription's what you're after, you can get double credits if you purchase any of our annual plans during this window. So if your annual plan includes 30 credits every month, you get 60, which is twice by my count. Plus, with our Free for Subscribers perk, anyone on a basic or pro plan instantly gets access to a thousand of our Free for Subscribers assets, which is a curated list normally paid for absolutely free, and it doesn't count towards your credit amount. That is a lot of assets. Look at all those elements. Look at all those chickens. Wow. And if you're a studio looking to give your team access to the entire Action VFX library with team features and unlimited downloads, contact us. For a limited time during Black Friday, we have a very special deal for you that includes a lot of other benefits and perks. Join alongside the top VFX studios in the world and gain access to the Action VFX library today. Okay, I'm back. Thank you so much for still being here. Uh, much appreciated. Um, so we're going to wrap up the stream now. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the workshop. Uh, remember, you can always watch it again. The link is still live, uh, although I need to add chapters to it. So I'll add the chapters tonight, and then tomorrow I'll make it live to the public. But if you have the link, the link where you're watching it now, you can always watch it because it will be available and listed. So the link will still work. You can always watch it, but I will put some chapters so that you can go specifically to the composting and then you can also skip the giveaway and skip away the chat. So, but yeah, this wraps up that shot that we were making on the workshop. It wraps up nine classes of that workshop. Uh, I'm bringing a new shot next time. I think this time I'm going to bring a shot that involves footage and CG. I think that will be probably more beneficial for everyone. So I might might do that. Anyway. 
We're gonna do the giveaway now for our tablet. So this will be the Shansi Labs Pen Tablet Medium, uh, given to them by the lovely folks over there. Uh, so we'll do that giveaway. And while we do the giveaway, we uh, will do some Q&A as well. Uh, so I'm gonna give it about like 10 minutes now of doing giveaways and, and Q&As. If you're here for the new compost thing, just go back uh, into the stream. You can always rewatch the VOD or you can go backwards to watch it again. It's not a problem. So you can do that. Um, anyway, um, I'm going to answer some questions. There's quite a lot of questions here. Still 100 people watching. Thank you so much for being here. Let's see here. Some questions. I noticed some people asking if there's a certificate with the, cha with the course. I must say that, you know, obviously I could make up a certificate, but the, cer the certificate means nothing because it's not a school. It's not like you're doing a bachelor degree or doing a, a, a master's degree. This is just an online course. So, yes, I could give you a paper that pretends that you have a certificate, but I don't do it because I kind of feel it's a bit pointless. You could, of course, become... You could have the logo of the course on your LinkedIn profile because you can become an alumni of the course. But if you really need a, a letter or something to tell people that you've been on the course, very happy to write one. Uh, but I don't believe we'll have a certificate because, I'll be honest, means nothing, a certificate, unless you need it for some legal purpose, you know. But to get a job, you literally just need to have a showreel, okay? So you don't need a certificate. You don't need an online course. You don't need any courses. You don't need a bachelor degree. You don't need anything except a good showreel. That's the main thing. So uh, <laughs> Sergio is saying he wants a fake certificate. That's great. I can give you one. <laughs> That's not a problem. Um, okay, so let's see here. Um, let's try to see if I can get some questions. Uh, let's see here. And if you have questions, just please go for, please go for it. Um, a lot of people giving a lot of love here. A lot of people saying that they that they liked the, the workshop. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, let's see here. Blah, blah, blah. Going back. There's not a lot of questions going on here. Am I wrong to see? I don't think there is any questions. Uh, oh, yeah, here we go. Alexandro is asking, so Alexandro is asking, is it possible with the default Nuke ZD Focus having similar results like PG Bokeh? I would say yes. I think the the default ZD Focus node is not bad. It's okay. But I think PG Bokeh will get you a better result faster. And it's also PG Bokeh is completely compatible with deep composting as well, which is really nice. So I would say that that in that sense it's more beneficial, but you definitely can make it look really nice with the ZD Focus Node. And in fact, there's like um, uh, there's a really nice depth of field plugin, Gizmo, uh, for free on Wikipedia. Can't remember top of my head the name of it, but there is a really nice one on Wikipedia. I'm sure people know about it. There's also YouTube videos about it, so you can always like uh, go and check that out. Um, so yeah. Let's see here. More questions. Uh, Cesar, uh, Cesar David, uh, David is asking, for a complete beginner, what skills should you focus to improve your getting a job as a composter? Well, if you're a real beginner and if you're just trying to starting a job, uh, you really need to be very good at keying and very good at rotoscoping and very good at cleanup because that will be the only thing you will do when you start your career. There's no way you're going to do CG compositing, so don't even forget about that and don't care about anything else except being very good at roto keying and cleanup. That is the main skill set that you really want to go for, you know. Uh, okay, so I have another question here for Miguel Angelo. Uh, Miguel Angelo is saying, I have asked you this question live at Vertex a couple of years ago. Oh, thank you so much, Miguel Angelo, for watching Vertex. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've asked you this question at Vertex a couple of years ago, but here goes for anyone else that is interested. Is Natron any good? Well, I'll be honest. I'll be very honest. I have never used Natron. I've looked at it. It looks very similar to Nuke. I'm, I'm sure it's good. I'm sure it does some cool stuff. Um, I've never used it. It's not industry standard. I mean, it's a free software. I'm not entirely sure it's going to get anywhere because the industry tends to not use free software. The reason for that is because 
it's a bit dangerous to be relying on a software that might disappear at any moment, uh, or there might be legal ramifications of using it in film. So, you know, I, I feel like it will probably be more common for you to see a commercial software instead of a free software. But yeah, to answer your question, I'm not sure. I'm sure it's I'm sure people on the chat here can tell me that it's good. I'm sure it will be. So yeah. Uh, Girasol Forever says Magic Defocus. I believe that's the one. Yeah, maybe it is. I can't really remember top of my head. Um, I know that it's the one that is the most... Um, uh, Nukipedia. Uh, Nukipedia. I think it's the one, the most downloaded one from Nukipedia. I believe so. Let's just have a look. I think it's the most... Uh, let's see here. Gizmos. Uh, if you go to the top, I think it's the first one because um, it's the best one. So <laughs> makes sense that it's downloaded for so much. Oh, this, this website is so slow. <laughs> it is so slow. Uh, okay, so let's see, sorry. Uh, yeah, this one. No, it's actually not called uh, Magic. Uh, what, what did you say? Magic Defocus. It's this one. This one is amazing. Uh, Bokeh Blur. Uh, this is a really nice node, uh, Bouquet Blur. Uh, I think it's this one. Is it this one? Oh, man, I don't remember. I can't remember now. I believe it's this one. I think it is. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I don't know yet anymore. I don't know anymore. Sorry, 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 sorry if I'm wrong. <laughs> if I'm wrong, oh, look, I can't really do much about it. Okay. Uh, other questions here. Uh, someone says that Netron crashes every five minutes. Okay, I'll believe you. Uh, it's, that's not good. Uh, Hadi, H Hadi or Hadi, I'm not really sure. I think maybe it's AD. AD is asks, hey, Hugo, how do you think this new AI art could change the future of compositing and visual effects workflows, especially in the case of work security for new artists? So I'll be very blunt about this because my opinion about AI and artificial art is really like, I couldn't care less. Here's the thing. I don't think it's going to make much of an impact in, in the long run. The reason for that is because from a legal point of view, this is a minefield. Because most of these AI tools are sc scrolling through the web to search for images. And then they use those images on the, on the actual pipelines to try to make. They use the images on their systems. The problem is that all these images are copyrighted. You know, if you use a bunch of film frames or a bunch of shots from Disney or a bunch of shots from Pixar, you're going to potentially be copyrighted because you've used those frames and even to develop your own art. So this is why, for example, if you look at most of the most famous AI tools to do art now, actually clearly say on the terms and conditions that anything made on this site, anything made on their on their system cannot be sold, you cannot profit from it, and also you don't own it. It's owned by the company or owned by someone else. So this, from a legal point of view, it's a huge problem. It's a huge problem. I'm talking about AI to support art. What I think, and I'm sure I'm wrong, I'm sure I'm going to be wrong, but what I think could happen is that AI tools will help the artists to do better on their own models, you know, so that you can actually make your own research using your own images to build other stuff. I think that's different. Uh, but this is a much longer discussion, a much bigger discussion. I'm Maybe I should do a... Um, a stream just about that. Um, I feel like maybe there should be. There was a lovely, there was a, there was a really nice um, uh, panel at the View Conference about this, uh, about this topic, and it was really good. So that would be my opinion. Uh, for the moment, I, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Uh, let's see here. Um, Computech, Computech says, I bought the course a couple of months ago, but I don't know why I keep going back to After Effects and keep putting off learning your course. Do you have any tips for motivation to keep learning? So computer tech, I would say one thing. The only way you're going to leave After Effects is if you dis uninstall it. That's the only way. That's how I did it. When I, I used to be an After Effects artist. In fact, I was an After Effects artist for five years. And I was also struggling to change to Shake. 
the moment that I forced myself, that's the moment that it really uh, worked. So what I did was I went to my computer and I uninstalled After Effects and only had Shake installed. And that forced me in production to learn it. So I would suggest that. Maybe give it a go, uninstall it, and really try to focus your attention into Nuke. That probably will solve it, you know. Okay, I'll answer a few more questions. Let's do the first giveaway. So this is going to be the giveaway for the Shansi Labs Pen Tablet Medium giveaway, which, uh, which was uh, kindly donated by them to this stream. Thank you so much for donating the, the, the tablet to everyone. Um, I've heard that it's a really good tablet. I have not used it in production yet, but I've heard that it's a, I've heard that it's an amazing, um, um, you know, um, ver like like I know most people use Wacom tablets as I do as well, but as as far as far as I've seen from the specs and for the very short amount of time that I've tried it uh, by myself, not in production, but just tried it, it kind of feels like it's a really nice cheaper solution if you can't afford the Wacom tablet. So I think it might be a, um, might be a good opportunity for you to give it a go. Uh, I'm definitely going to give it a lot of go and really try it out really because it looked to me like it was really good, um, at least the, the, the few hours that I tried it. So let's see here. So I'm going to draw the, the... We have a potential of 150 people that can win this. Let's see who wins it. Okay, so I hope he's here. So the winner um, is actually from Serbia. And uh, the winner of the tablet is uh, Milan Nikolic. I think that's how I pronounce your name. I hope so. I hope you're here. Congratulations, you've won the tablet. So uh, the only thing you need to do now is to see if you're here. I'll email you and I'll ask you for your address so that we can send it. Um, yeah. Oh, you're here? Okay, cool. Excellent. So, um, so yeah, so I can see, yeah, I can see it's you because I can see the photo is the same. So congratulations, my friend, you've won the tablet. Um, and yeah, we'll send you one. I'll, I'll, I'll email you for your address and then I can ship you that. Congratulations. Uh, again, very kind, uh, of Shenzhen Labs to offer this tablet to give it away on my stream. I'm definitely going to make more videos and I'm actually planning to do a review about this tablet um, and actually really go through its spaces because I'm actually going to use my next production. I'm going to use it on the production. So I'm going to see how it works. Okay, so uh, congratulations. You've won um, You won the tablet. Um, so, so congratulations, my friend. So let's do a few more questions and then we have the last giveaway of the day before we go and all we go and watch the England-US game. <laughs> At least I want to go and see it. I want to see England uh, or US. Let's see who wins. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we had other questions here. Uh, Akira is asking, do you plan to make a tutorial about USD pipeline in Nuke? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I'm not sure yet. Um haven't really tried it yet, uh, so I need to like look into it. Uh, let's see here. Du -du 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 -du. Let's see more questions. Uh, there are questions. Uh, da -da. Oh, it's a lot of comments, not a lot of questions going on here. Uh, let's see here. Okay, John Novak has a question. John Novak asks. What Nuke Edge Extend gizmo do you use? Okay, so <laughs> on the script that you saw today on the workshop, I'm using a very old Nukipedia gizmo extender that I used to use called the Color Edge. I think it's still on Nukipedia, I believe. It's called Color Edge altogether. Um, but these days I use the one that comes with Nuke, the built-in, because the one that comes with Nuke now, the one from Nuke 14, I believe, or Nuke 12 maybe, Nuke 14 or 12, I can remember. That one is GPU accelerated, so it's much faster. So I use that one. Um, so Vinari is asking, could you explain color space? Wow, Vinari, that's gonna uh, that Vinay, sorry, Vinay, Vinay, Vinu, that's gonna take too long. Color space is such a big topic. I would really advise you to go and watch, um, you know, you can watch Victor Perez's video from Netflix. That's a really good video about color space. Maybe watch that one. And um, let's see here. 
Strusty asks, what do you advise for a 080 wearing on Nuke? A time timetable wise 20 hours a week over a year i don't know what this question is about what are you asking i can't really understand your question what do you advise for a 080 wearing on nuke time timetable wise 20 hours a week i'm sorry i'm not entirely sure what you're asking sorry about that david davies rd asks have you ever used v-ray in nuke i have never used v-ray in nuke no i've used v-ray in cg but not in nuke no never used that so i'm yeah, i've heard really good things vv cassie asks any recommendations regarding books uh, and tutorials um, for learning about lgt passes and how the work with them in nuke so <clears throat> I'm not sure about books. I mean, I have several videos on my YouTube channel about books for, for photography and lighting. Not entirely sure about any book about passes. I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe I should write one. <laughs> Maybe I should do that. Uh, so, uh, Abai Singh asks, Abai Singh asks, are you going to add new lessons into coming future to your course? Yes, I am. I mean, my course has been updated quite a few times. Uh, we've uh, Last year, we've added a bunch of classes with Nuke 12. We had the new Shuffle node. We had a bunch of new classes. We had a new workshop as well. And yes, I am. I'm, I'm constantly updating the course. The course has been ongoing since 2018. So we have classes from 2018. We have classes from 2019. We have classes from 2020. have classes from 2021. We have classes in Nuke 12. 11, Nuke 12, Nuke 13. It kind of goes and keeps growing. And now we're going to now add some new classes from Nuke 14 for some of the new nodes. And we're also going to, in the future, add some new classes for Nuke 14. So it is an ongoing project. Keep going and going and going. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Frames by Key J asks, thoughts on Fusion? Oh, man, that's such a long question. I don't know. I like Fusion. It's free and, and it's okay, but it's no Nuke. <laughs> that's for sure. It's not as good as Nuke, that's for sure. Uh, let's see here. Other questions. My favorite gizmos. Pff, I don't know, man. I That's such a weird question. I, I have no idea. I have, I have used, I use hundreds of gizmos, so I don't know. Maybe I guess maybe the gizmo I use the most, most likely... <laughs> is the grain gizmo from uh, from Luma Pictures, the L grain. I love the L grain node. Um, so maybe that's my favorite gizmos. It's from Luma Pictures. Those, those are really good. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, uh, let's see here. Ah. Uh, what is a good tablet to work? I don't know. I use a Wacom tablet, but you know, maybe there's a lot of tablets out there. We just give away a tablet now, and I'm, I, I think the Shenzhen Labs tablet is really good as well. It looks like it's really good. Um, uh, you're asking Victor Perez and Netflix? No. What Victor Perez did was Victor Perez made um, a, a YouTube video about Color Space on the Netflix Research YouTube channel. That's why. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm gonna wrap up this anyway. Um, I'll I'll answer one question here. Silver Bullet Bulletin asks, "Do you watch all these Blu-rays on projector or TV?" I watch them on a projector as much as I try, as much as I can, especially if it's a 4K Blu-ray. Just like just a few days ago, I watched Top Gun Maverick on 4K Blu-ray, which was amazing on my projector as well. Um, okay, so let's see here. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm going to move on to the last winner. So let's just do this um, and then wrap up and go away. Because <laughs> it's been on almost three hours um, and I really enjoyed it. Really, thank you so much. Uh, before I do the giveaway, I'm just going to let you know that uh, in a couple of weeks, we'll do another showroom review. So I'm trying to do these showroom reviews every two weeks. That's my plan. So we'll have another live stream. Won't have a live stream next week, but we'll have a live stream the week after. So um, we'll have another live stream the week after about uh, showroom reviews. We've had 30 showroom reviews that people sent off. And then after that, in two weeks, and then the week after that, we will continue a workshop, this time a brand new workshop. And I will try my best to edit these classes and put them up um, edited so that you don't have to scroll through it. But 
I will add the chapters later tonight, and then when you watch this, you can watch the chapters. Okay, I'm going to drag the last winner for the Nuke course for free. This is a Nuke course that is valued at 250 pounds. And obviously, uh, don't forget that if you want to um, be part of my Nuke course, I'm, that's going to be the last... This is going to be the last thing I'm going to shout out on before we wrap up and before we do the giveaway. Don't forget that my Nuke course is currently 50% off. This is the cheapest that it's ever been. So it's 125 pounds. It includes 50 hours. It includes 150 classes. It includes 200 gigs of showreel material. 200 gigs, okay? So if you want, there's a trailer uh, that I'm going to post on the chat here. You can watch the trailer. Or you can have you can go directly to the PayPal link um, as well, and then buy it as well if you want to. Uh, so yeah, so feel free to check it out. Um, there's a trailer that explains all of it about the course. In the description of the video, you also have all the details about the course. If you are interested, this promotion, 50% off, will only be during Black Friday, today, tomorrow, and Sunday. It finishes on Sunday, so this is your last chance to get this, um, the cheapest this course has ever been. Now, the last winner of the giveaway, let's see here, the last, the last winner of the Nuke course is, uh, yeah, here you go. So, uh, today India is really strong. We had a winner from India, which was Taran Verma, and now we have another winner from India. So uh, this time it's Ab uh, Abhinav Takur. I, I hope that's your name. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced it. So Abhinav Takur. Again, my boat winners from India, thank you so much for being here because I know it's, it's really late on India. It's currently, uh, yeah, it's currently midnight 15. It's like over midnight now. So congratulations. So yeah, congratulations for winning the course. Uh, much congratulations. I'm going to email both of you, don't worry. I'll email uh, Tarun and I'll email uh, Takur as well. I'll email both of you uh, with the details of the course tomorrow. Uh, thank you so much. Congratulations to all the winners. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for spending the afternoon with me. Uh, afternoon, night, morning, depending on where you are. <laughs> And um, we'll be back, uh, not next week, we'll be back the week after that. So that means the next stream will be the showreel reviews. And the stream will be, I'll tell you the date already. Of course, keep an eye on my social media because I will I will announce it there. But the next stream will be on the 9th of December, no, sorry, on the 7th of December. 7th of December, we're going to be doing the showreel reviews. So come back and uh, keep an eye on my social media because I'll be... Uh, posting it there so again thank you so much for being here you guys are wonderful as always uh, you always give me so much love and so much care thank you so much and goodbye everyone I'm gonna go and watch the England US game now and um, thank you so much for everyone um, I it was really lovely to talk to you and I hope you've enjoyed hope you've enjoyed the nuke workshop now it's over it's nine classes and you can always go back and watch them again I would like also to thank my sponsor, Action VFX. Thank you so much for sponsoring the stream. Also, I would like to thank the, the sponsor, The Foundry, which also supported this stream as well. So thank you so much for Action VFX, and thanks so much for The Foundry, and thank you so much to all the lovely people here. And I'll see you all there. I'll see you in a few weeks. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Goodbye, goodbye.